Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Proud to be here with you every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time and hanging out here with the man that they call Mr. Mike Sofka. And he is here with us from Hall of Fame FantasyFootball.com. He's typically with us every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. But let's be honest, it's like 10 to noon. We always under-promise, over-deliver, and we always appreciate having Mike Sofka on the show. So he is here with us for a bonus show today. And this bonus show is going to involve Mike and I grading every single owner inside of the Wake Up Call Fantasy Football Leagues. There are three leagues in central New York that are at the Wildcat Sports Pub, and there is one Marywood Alumni League for the first time ever. Uh, Marywood Alumni have joined me in a wake-up call Marywood League where we get to connect with those of us that are that all went to the same alma mater in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and the home of the office. And then we will also uh, get into Mike and I, uh, the league that we are with. We are with, uh, with one another down in the state of Florida that just hit our decade mark uh, we'll be discussing that one. Now, Mike will not grade himself. I will not grade myself because that doesn't make sense. So we're not going to do that. Um, so Mike will be grading me. Uh, I'm in all these leagues, so Mike will be grading me uh, numerous times, which will be exciting. And I will, uh, I'll be grading Mike when uh, the time comes. And, of course, I will be having some fun with this all the way through. So if you're in any of our leagues in Central New York, any of those three leagues at the Wildcat, we will be grading you today. And if you are in the Floridian League, we'll be grading you as well as if you are in that Marywood League. So we'll be doing them uh, piece by piece. We're not going to jump all over the place, so you'll be able to follow us. And so I'm happy and excited to give you the opportunity to be a part of this. But before we do any of that, let's bring the man in, Mr. Sofka. How you doing? I'm doing awesome, Dan. Thank you. And, and you know what? I, I want to let you know that we don't even have to really do the show today to grade your team because I know where you got your cheat sheet. I know where you got your information. I'm just going to give you an A right now. I think you did great. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And that cheat sheet, and uh, let me uh, let me bring it up here for everybody to see on the screen because I'm not even kidding with you. Uh, my, my, my Mike Sofka sheet here, the Hall of Fame Fantasy Football cheat sheet, is actually sitting right here on my desk. I think it's one of the most comprehensive and easiest things to read. I'm not saying that because Mike and I co-host together. I'm saying that because I literally have used it in all of the uh, drafts that we've had. And, you know, I put up our uh, our prediction, our rankers here, and so I have my own rankers as well uh, that I utilized in the draft. And then, uh, you know, Mike's Mike's sheet is just, it's incredible. The the attention to detail, the amount of detail that's on here, the amount of, that, uh, of players that are at each position, all their bye weeks, which is an extremely essential thing, that can be left off of some sheets that shouldn't be, as well as, you know, the, the overall um, looking at this, and, and I'm just, I don't know, I'm just blown away by it, and, and, and I, I can't thank you enough, Mike. This, this, this made my draft uh, more efficient, arguably, than it's ever been, so I want to thank you for your products because I can tell you that I don't speak on things that I don't use, and the fact that I had the opportunity to utilize uh, your product uh, for this draft is something very uh, incredible that I appreciate so much. So thank you for that. Yeah, don't worry. That's, and that's what it's about, trying to make it as easy and enjoyable as possible. You know, I see people at drafts sometimes stressed out. I see people, oh, my gosh, this, or, oh, that, that ruins my whole day, or, oh, my plan was to do this. But now it's you, you can go multiple directions with that piece of information there at your fingertips. So it's a wonderful thing, and it does make life easier, and it makes, makes the game more enjoyable, and it steers you in a direction for winning. And let's face it, this game's a lot more fun when you win. I mean, it's all about fun, but it's a lot more fun when you win. Yeah, you know, and it's it, I'm very excited to be able to do this, uh, you know, the draft grade show and to be able to bring this out. Mike and I are going to be doing a, a couple different things here today, and uh, when all's said and done, you'll be able to see this in in uh, in separate videos that you can find on facebook.com backslash wakeupcalldt uh, later on today, as well as on youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt. So we will make it easy for you to get to these videos, just like we do with anything else. Like I said, Mike is with me in the Fantasy Football Power Hour every Wednesday from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Proudly brought to you by the Wildcat Sports Pub. This is a bonus show, and I'm ecstatic for the opportunity to be able to do this. And uh, we are going to be going uh, league by league here to set this up. So 
Mike, I'm going to uh, start things off here, and and I know that uh, we have a lot to sift through here today, and we will get to every single team owner that is in the Wake Up Call Fantasy Football League. So we will not skip anybody here today, and uh, we are gonna we're gonna start first and foremost, Mike. I'll take you here to uh, the league, and we're gonna put it up here on the screen so that everybody can see it because I don't want anybody to to miss a single thing, and we'll be able to uh, have some fun with it here. We're going to be talking about the uh, Q's Contenders League. So Q's Contenders, we'll be talking about uh, these first three teams, uh, Whelan and Dylan, as well as Hot Chub Time Machine and Bench Warmers. So we'll go in that order, Mike, and I will let you uh, take it away and give your thoughts on what you think uh, of each of these. So let's get it started. Fantasy grades are happening now. So this is the Q's Contenders League. I want to put this up for everybody that knows so that they can follow it in real time. Uh, Q's Contenders League is getting is getting their draft grades live now. So he is getting the uh, the draft grades happening now. Mike, I will leave it to you for Whelan and Dylan first. Yeah, first of all, hats off for the team name. I like the team name. I, I've flipped through a lot of them, and I, lo- I like a lot of the team names. That's creative stuff there that's good. I'm usually boring. I usually go with the same old thing. But anyway, look, looking at Whelan and Dylan, I think they – now, obviously, you have team quarterback in this league, and that can be good or bad, but, you know, I think it's more good than bad. And I think they did pretty good here. I'm, I'm looking at Saquon Barkley, Miles Sanders, Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin, Mark Andrews, and then they go and get Brady or the Tampa Bay Bucks quarterback. Now, of course, we do have a recent injury here, Sutton in the flex, but you got Beckham in your flex. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's just That's just a ridiculous team. So I like this team a lot. The, uh, the only downside to this team, I think, is that, um, well, you can't play all year with this team. You can only play one season. This is a pretty good team here. I like the Dallas defense. I I, I would have to give this one an A. I would have to give Wheeling and Dillon an A. I think, it's, I think it's an awesome team. Well, you know, I appreciate it. And the thing that I think is really cool is that I sent Mike – these team, these uh, these teams, but I didn't tell him who owns the team. Mike, is that is my team? Good, I think you did great. I, I, there you go. It's so, everything we talked about. It's, it's a blind testimonial of everything we've been talking about so far this morning. That's awesome. Yeah, so I think I, I think that that's really cool because Mike has no idea whose team he's talking about, which is going to make it even even more you know honest and true and real. So. Uh, thank you, Mike, giving me an A. We will be uh, both be grading uh, these these next teams here because, like I said, I will not be grading my team. Hot Chub Time Machine, Mike, what, what do you give for a grade for this one? Again, hats off for the name. I like that. It made me smile here. You know, I think Stafford, the Lions QB, the Lions team QB, that's an under, undervalued pick there. I think, I think there's some value depending on where he got picked. Dalvin Cook is a question mark in my mind, but I think he's going to be fine because, after all, this is a contract year, and these guys amazingly have the career performance during a contract year, but every other year these guys can't seem to stay healthy or on the field. It's ironic that that happens, but it does. Look at the history in the league. I like Kenny Galladay. I like Nick Chubb, Calvin Ridley, uh, Austin Hooper. I think he's going to have a fine year. I don't think he's going to have the year that he had last year just based on the number of targets he was able to get you know, when he was with Atlanta. That's why I like Hayden Hurst as a dark horse tight end this year. I like Mark Ingram in the flex, T.Y. Hilton, the Bill D. I like that a lot as well. I like looking at the bench. I like Leonard Fournette, Cooper, Swift. I like the long shot there. I say long shot because he's going to have trouble getting on the field now with Adrian Peterson, and Swift is dinged up a bit. Uh, A.J. Green, I think he's going to have a hard time coming back, but I think he's got a more efficient than expected quarterback in Joe Burrow. I'm looking up and down the roster here. I don't I don't see too many flaws, but when you compare it to the roster we just compared to, that's where I'm going to have to give this one a B. I, I think it's a great team, don't get me wrong, but compared to the first one, this one's a B. If the first one's an A, this one's a B. So, Mike, Mike giving the Hot Chub Time Machine a B. I'm going to take a look at it now. Uh, Lions quarterback, uh, obviously uh, Matt Stafford. Uh, he has talent around him, but... I'd like to see Matt step it up. I don't have him in the elite level. I, I don't. I think he's capable. I think he has been capable. But what he shows from here is going to be important. Uh, Delvin Cook, if he stays healthy, you know that's a big if. He is a very dangerous player. I am a fan of Nick Chubb. He's one of the only players that was able to get things done in an offense that seemingly couldn't move uh, last year the way that they needed to, which is crazy because they have so much t- 
talent. Uh, Calvin Ridley, uh, I'm a fan of him. I missed out on him in a, in a lot of uh, drafts. People were able to pick him up. I kind of let him drop a little bit in certain areas. People got smart and hip to the game. Uh, they must have been listening to the Fantasy Football Power Hour every Wednesday, brought to you by the Wildcat Sports Pub from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, right here on MixLR.com backslash DT and on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT. Uh, Austin Hooper, I am a fan of Austin Hooper. I like this pick. Uh, Mark Ingram the second, I like that, even though they have a stable of backs there. I think that might affect him a little bit, but we I do think he's going to have some success. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, I think, has a reemergence potentially with Philip Rivers there. I like the Bills' defense, big fan of them. Uh, and then uh, Matt Prater, the longtime Detroit kicker. Leonard Fournette, this, this one worked out. Uh, we were drafting before he ended up being uh, released and waived by the Jaguars and ended up in Tampa. This is a good pickup. Amari uh, Cooper, uh, DeAndre Swift, A.J. Green. Eh, you know, I'm going to see what A.J. Green can do. Uh, hopefully he can stay healthy. Debo Samuel is uh, is a threat. We saw them kind of Tyreek Hill. Uh, they, they used him as Tyreek Hill when they went up against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, and it worked for a half, but they didn't do it after that, which is confusing. Hopefully they'll utilize him in a lot of different ways this season to the benefit of this team. Uh, Sony Michelle, I like it. Uh, Kyle Rudolph, an and, and oldie but goodie. Not going to give you too much. Maybe 40 yards, maybe you know three good games a season. And I do like Kirk Cousins here as well. So I'm going to agree with you, Mike. Uh, this this is a this is Johnny Roberts' team, and so uh, that's why you're seeing a few lions on here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give him a B as well. So I'll be giving uh, Johnny a B. And uh, bench warmers is the next one up here. So I do want to make note here for those of you that are watching and checking this out, and of course. If you'd like to join us for 24-7 coverage of fantasy football, please make sure you join our Facebook group, Winning Fantasy Football. All you have to do is go to your Facebook search engine and click uh, and uh, type in Winning Fantasy Football, and you will find us there. So make sure that you do that today. Uh, with that being said, Mike, we're going to go into the next team, Bench Warmers. What do you have for this team as far as a grade? Well, quick question. Did you guys give team names before the draft or like Hot Chubb time machine? Did he know he was getting Nick Chubb? Did he wait till after he got Nick Chubb to name the team? How'd that work? Uh, so I, I think a lot of the, I think, you know, some teams kind of just kept the names they had like bench warmers, but uh, other teams, it was a play on words after they did it. Like I got AJ Dillon, so I named my team Whelan and Dillon. So uh, I would say some people, uh, you know, got creative once they knew who was going to be on their squad. Okay, just just curious how that went because you know you might be if you name your team Hot Chubb Time Machine, maybe you feel pressure to draft Chubb. Do you know what I mean? To to, to make it fit. I, right. just, I was just curious about that. All right, let's get on to bench warmers here. Obviously, I love the quarterback there, and we saw that last night in in uh, Patrick Mahomes. I think he, he he's an excellent quarterback. The you know the Chiefs quarterback. You're not going to go wrong when you have the Chiefs quarterback on your. On your fantasy team, Aaron Jones has some question marks about Austin Dillon possibly taking his job. I disagree with that theory. I think that Austin Dillon there is going to push Aaron Jones to another level, and I think that's going to be great. So I think that's a good pick there. Todd Gurley, I think that's an undervalued pick. A lot of people down on him. DeAndre Hopkins, I think he's going to have an excellent year. I don't know if he's going to be the same guy as he was in Houston. I don't know if he's going to put the same points, but you can't argue with the, you know, soon to be relationship between him and Kyler Murray. I think Kyler Murray is going to be outstanding this year. I think he has a chance to be the MVP, especially with DeAndre Hopkins. So that's good news for Hopkins there. Lockett, I think he's undervalued as well. Same thing with Jared Cook. Those are safe plays. They're more on a conservative side, but at the same time, where you get them in the draft is everything. Will Fuller, I think a lot of people seem to forget about him. He seems to play very well in the front half of the year, then he gets dinged up or hurt, and then he can't finish the year. So let's take a look at the bench here. Let's see, on the bench, Kareem Hunt, I like that. James White, I like that. This is probably a PPR league, is that right? Yes, yep. Yeah, James White, that's an excellent find. He's going to get about seven, eight, eight uh, receptions a game, and that's wonderful for uh, bench warmers here. Tyler Murray, that, that's great. You know, David Montgomery, I'm a little bit worried about this pick. He had the lower extremity injury going into the season here, and I'm worried that that's not fully recovered. You're going to see an uptick in Tyree Cohen. And write this name down, Ryan Nall. Ryan Nall, that's a guy who's going to fill in if David Murray can't get it done. So that's a guy you want to have in the back of your mind. N-A-L-L, -L, Ryan Nall. But 
Uh, you know, I'm looking at Randall Cobb. Still has speed after 10 years in the league. I think that's great. Taysom Hill, I'm not sure what kind of what kind of volume you're going to get there. You, you know, you may want to look on the bench for, uh, I'm sorry, on the waiver wire. I'll give you a couple quick names to replace David, uh, Taysom Hill because I'm not sure the scoring mechanism in this league is going to be worth having him even on the roster. In some leagues it is, but in this league probably not based on what I see and know. Um, I would say good look for a Brian Edwards. Brian Edwards, he's going to shock people out of Las Vegas. Everybody's got their eye and their mind on Henry Ruggs. A Van Jefferson, he's going to take over. He's the next Cooper Cup for the Rams. So there's a couple quick names I would replace Taysom Hill with on the bench and actually get you some value. Should you know a guy like uh, you know Todd, Todd Gurley get hurt, then you can move people around, move him into the flex, or should Will Fuller get hurt, which we expect, unfortunately. You know, you have some options there. All in all, I think this is a good team. Again, I'm going to give this team a B. I think it's a solid a solid effort. Just a couple tweaks there along the season. And, you know, if you have questions or you have anything, uh, you know, you can always go to my website, Hall of Fame Fantasy Football. Uh, dot com. You can shoot me a, a question or, you know, you'll probably get your question answered by looking at some of the information we have up there for free. But I, I think bench warmers get the solid B. It's a good draft. So, Mike, giving a B to uh, to this team, and this team is Aaron Roberts, the wife of Johnny Roberts, and Aaron, who has won a championship already in this league, and the, the ladies have done a fantastic job of owning this league. Uh, Becky, whose team will be coming up as well in a little bit, she has also won. So Aaron's team right here, the bench warmers. Uh, Mike, Mike giving the bench warmers a B. So I'll put that up there for the bench warmers for Mike. Uh, I, looking at this, I mean, obviously Pat Mahomes, uh, Aaron, Aaron had a at the second overall pick. Uh, taking Aaron, take, <clears throat> taking Pat Mahomes, I love it. Uh, Aaron Jones, I do think AJ Dillon's eventually going to take him out and oust him here. That's why I drafted him. And uh, he's on my bench currently. Todd Gurley's a question mark. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, I think, is going to do good, but may take some time to gel. And I do think Arizona's going to have a high-powered offense, and it's going to be good for the future. But it'll, I think it'll take a little bit of time, maybe some frustration, hopefully not too much in fantasy. Uh, Tyler Lockett, I've never been sold on. Jared Cook, I know that uh, Drew Brees likes his tight ends, but you know, I, I go I, I go back and forth with this. He's going to spread the ball around. Will Fuller, the fifth, is a fantastic pick if he stays healthy. Uh, Marvin Jones Jr. has bailed me out a bunch of times, but this is contingent on if Detroit can actually move the ball. They have the talent to do so, more talent than they've had in a while. And then, you know, I like David Montgomery on the bench. Uh, you know, I, I think he could do some things. I think Chicago should lean on the run. They should probably be like Boston College in, you know, it has a college team, and, and they should just focus on running the ball and playing hard defense because I don't trust the quarterback situation or the wide receivers there. You see, I don't draft any of the Chicago wide receivers because it's just it hasn't been working in Chicago. So uh, I do like Randall Cobb, and I, and I like uh, David Montgomery in the running game. Randall Cobb, not a bad person to have on your bench or as a flex. James White's good for receptions. Kareem Hunt, I would anti- I would hope, has more in the tank than what he's shown us. And uh, picking up the Green Bay quarterback, uh, Aaron Rodgers, is something that I expected because, you know, this is – this is, you know, this is Miss Aaron Roberts' team, and she loves her Green Bay Packers. So, uh, Tyler Boyd, not a bad bet. I think uh, Cincinnati's going to be playing from behind and have to air it out. And you got the Kansas City kicker, which is smart, and you got arguably the best defense in the country with the 49ers. So, a lot of good here for Aaron. I, 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 I understand why you get, went B, but I'm going to give Aaron an A, and I'm giving her an A because she is extremely intelligent, extremely hip to the game, and like I said, she vies for those championships and. She knows what it's like to to uh, to win championships in our league, so I'm going to give her an A in this respect. And to jump on to uh, more here from the the uh, Cuse Contenders League, Mike, as we step into Chicks Dig the Pigskin Two, what are your thoughts on this one? And I'll hand it off to you. Yeah, I like the team name there, a little bit outside the box. I like that, so that tells me a lot about the owner right there. You know, Texans QB. We saw last night that. You know, you know, without DeAndre Hopkins, what do they have? They don't have a legitimate deep ball threat. The offensive line is porous, and half the time was Deshaun Watson running around trying to save his life, make a play, and sometimes he was able to and sometimes not. So you're just going to have to take the good with the bad there and trust that they went up against a, a tough Kansas City team, offense, defense, homeowner, just coming off the Super Bowl, didn't have to do 
that what they call rubber chicken tour, which is they go around doing book deals and commercials and getting praised for all they did because of the corona situation. So that may help them in a way that may keep them humble and keep their minds on the object in front of them. And that's to continue on for this new season here. So I, I definitely like that Deshaun Watson still. I think uh, DeAndre Hopkins missing is going to be, you know, a challenge throughout the year, but I think they're going to overcome that somehow, some way. It's just the Chiefs are a solid team, so don't think that's indicative of Deshaun Watson and what's going to happen all year. I think he's going to put up better numbers than he did last night. Love Zeke. Love the Zeke Elliott pick. Uh, curious as to where this owner was drafting because I've seen Zeke go in the top four, but I've heard that he's gone lower. I always had him as a top three, so I, I, I don't know, but Zeke, Zeke is an excellent pick. Backing that up with James Conner, that's another solid pick. Julio Jones should have a stellar year, of course. DJ Moore keeps impressing every year. Again, he and DJ Chark were tops to the Adjusted Explosive Index several years ago when they came out as, as rookies, and you know, you've heard us talk about that, so that's great upside for these guys. Zach Hurts, you can't go wrong, but Hurts gets hurt. And that's a problem. So, you know, you got to make sure you're backing that situation up. And I see you've done that finally with Hunter Henry. I think that's a, a great bench pick. I think, you know, there's going to be some good and bad. A question marks out for Hunter Henry. You know, you would think on paper that he would continue to have a great season, a great effort in fantasy, putting up numbers and targets. But with the new quarterback situation with uh, Tyrod Taylor and then the, possibly the rookie coming in and Justin Herbert, I, you know, there's a lot of question marks there. Ronald Jones has question marks. Devontae Parker has question marks at quarterback. Uh, uh, Matt Breda, again, committee situation. Christian Kirk, is he going to be able to get the targets he needs in what they're trying to make an explosive Kansas City-type offense in Arizona? I think this is a solid team as well. This should be a winning team in the league. I like Marquise Brown in the flex, Chris Carson in the flex. There's nothing not to like there. I'm going to give his team a B plus. I think this is a good effort. So, Mike, Mike giving a, a B-plus here to Becky Styles Oliver. Uh, he's going to go B-plus. And, uh, you know, take a look at this, like like you said, Mike, and, and we're going to roll through these uh, a little bit rapidly as we go because we have uh, five leagues to get through. But, you know, I would say uh, Deshaun Watson, Ezekiel Elliott, James Conner, Julio Jones, DJ Moore, Zach Ertz, these are all high-quality uh, players. Chris Carson, if he can stay healthy and, you know, obviously what he can do outside – uh, of the backfield itself, Marquise Hollywood Brown, and him being involved. I like Jared Goff as a backup quarterback. I like Hunter Henry, and you know, I, obviously uh, Christian Kirk is another guy that I'm looking forward to. So I'm going to go ahead and give Becky a B plus in this as well. Actually, you know what? I think uh, no, I'm going to give her a B plus. I was thinking about B, but no, I'll give her a B plus. Stick, you know, stick with what you got here. So. I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give Becky a B plus in the grand scheme of things here, Mike. We'll go to the next one, and that's uh, that will be our uh, pie hole Tuhi. What do you think about this? This was the person who had the number one pick in the draft, and no, they did not draft Josh Allen uh, first overall, but they had the number one pick in the draft. That is this team. What do you, what do you have for this? Well, thank goodness they didn't mess up the number one pick. I've seen the number one pick get messed up before. Christian McCaffrey, regardless of the scoring system, is the number one pick. If he wasn't the number one pick in your fantasy draft, you got to ask yourself, why? Why am I in this league? <laughs> Somebody obviously doesn't know what they're doing. And I also look at this, and he's backed up the situation at tight end with Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. All I got to say is, why did you guys let that happen? Because he drafted he drafted them very high. He drafted uh, Travis Kelsey in round two, and when he had the snake draft come back, he drafted Kelsey and Kittle back-to-back, -back, which I don't think I've ever seen in over a decade, is drafting a tight end that high and getting the top two together in round two and three. Well, it's not a bad strategy in this league, as we've talked about before, this league being PPR. Those guys are, are target hogs. They're going to get the ball. They're going to get the yards. They're going to get the touchdowns, the red zone targets. That's a great thing because we've also talked about it before because if he's on your team, he's not on the other side beating you, even if one of your guys gets hurt. Now you're backed up great there. So so hats off. Le'Veon Bell's got a lot to prove this year. Juju Smith-Schuster, can he be the true number one? Same thing with Stephon Diggs and his move to, to Buffalo. 
looking up and down the roster, I think it's a great team. I'm, I'm looking at the Bills QB. I think Josh Allen is the most underrated quarterback there is. He gets a lot of rushing yards and touchdowns as well, but you know he gets overshadowed by guys like Lamar Jackson. Raheem Mozart I like a lot this year. I think he's undervalued even though he's in a committee situation. I'm looking at Brandon Cooks, question marks there, question marks on him from last night. Philip Lindsay, question marks with Melvin Gordon there. So even though there's some really good things here, there's some question marks on the team, especially on the bench, but I would give it a B minus. I think it's a I think it's a good effort. So Mike giving a, a B minus to John Tui, who had the number one pick. Uh, you know that John is a Bills fan. I'm sure you couldn't tell by looking at this. Uh, John Brown being on the team. Uh, Tyler Bass, the Buffalo kicker. Robert Woods, who is a former Buffalo Bill that's now in the Rams. Devin Singletary, Buffalo running back. Uh, Buffalo quarterback Josh Allen. Buffalo wide receiver Stephon Diggs. I believe their bye week is week 11, which I told him that I will be. I said, I'm going to have to. Re- yeah, it is week 11. I said, I'm going to have to uh, rig the schedule so I play you on week 11, where you'll have four players available because you know he's not going to drop any of that. I'm going to say that in you know in this Mike, I am not for drafting uh, Homer picks in the sense of uh, you know I mean I guess it depends on the team that you have, but it's also bye weeks and it's just an overall look at it. You have to take that out of it, and I don't see a lot of teams have success that lean on you know their favorite team. Now, well, what if their favorite team is the Chiefs, Dan? What if their favorite team is the Patriots? I get that. Well, there you go. But you have to, you know what? There's that side of it, but you also have to be multiple and you have to look outside of the box. You have to take away. You know, the emotion of, I don't like that team, or I really, really like this team. I didn't draft Steelers forever in a day because they were rivals a long time ago to Jacksonville and a long time rival to the Cowboys, so I never drafted a Steeler. Well, I finally decided one year, I go, this is ridiculous, this is stupid. I drafted Antonio Brown, and I won the championship in my league, my first championship. So, you know, you, you have to take that side out of it, and for that reason... I do like some of the things, and Christian McCaffrey, obviously, as much as he likes the Bills, he he didn't shy away from making the only pick that I've seen in every single league I've been in this year, which is that Christian McCaffrey has been a consensus, consensus number one, running back consensus number one overall fantasy player, regardless of if it's PPR or standard or a concoction of both, which ours are, and whatever it may be. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, uh, for the first time in a long time, I've seen somebody be the true person. Mike and I said it at the end of last season, all the way through the off season, all the way to this season, we told you Christian McCaffrey. We did not change our thoughts, and the leagues did not change that number one pick. Uh, Christian McCaffrey became synonymous with it. We appreciate you listening to us, and uh, we appreciate the fact that's, that we put that work in, and, and Mike and I don't have an off season, even though people might think there is an off season. So, I would have to say with John in this one, uh, you know, I like it. I like some of the stuff he's done. He got Jimmy Garoppolo late. Uh, you gave him a B minus. I'm going to give him a B. So I'm going to give uh, John a B in this one. Bolts Nation E double. What do you have for this one, Mike? Yeah, just looking at this team, I like it a lot. I like Clyde Edwards Hilaire. You saw that last night. He reminds me of an Emmett Smith able to squeeze in the smallest crevice and still inch out a, a, a tremendous gain. He can break it outside. The guy can do it all. The one flaw I saw is they kept trying to give him the ball short yardage, you know, even on goal line situations between the tackles. And, you know, I, I, I think that's where everybody knows he's coming. Then there's a problem, and you see they shut him down. So they're going to tweak that in Kansas City, I'm sure. But, you know, I like Clyde edwards Solaire. I like the car. I think Kyler Murray's going to have a MVP season here. Austin Eckler, I like him a lot. Look out and get your get your waiver wire or free agent minds and get your pencil out here because I want you to write down the name Josh uh, Joshua Kelly. He's gonna he's gonna be the backup there, but he's also gonna be that guy that Austin Eckler was. He's gonna be the third down back. He's gonna be the the back to give Eckler a blow. So Kelly, that's what an E Y on the end. Keep him, put him on your watch list if you would. Michael Thomas, what's not to say bad about? What's to say bad about him? He's obviously the top receiver in the game. Adam Thielen, one of the top receivers. Here's where I think there's a challenge, and that's uh, Darren Waller. I think you know I was high on him before everybody knew who he was, and now I'm low on him. I think there's pressure to get the ball to Henry Ruggs. I think Brian Edwards is going to demand some targets. I think a hunter. Renfro. I think if Josh Jacobs is going to continue to get the ball. They're going to pass him the ball. I don't think we can expect that type of year at a Waller again. It'd be nice 
And I'd like to say, yeah, everything's sunshine, rainbows, and, and free candy, but it's not like that all the time. So I like what you did, though, with backing that up with Noah Fant. I think Noah Fant could possibly have a better year than Darren Waller. So don't go dropping Waller. I'm just telling you, he's not a top four or five tight end like everybody has. He's more like a top 10 to 12 tight end, but that's okay in this size league. You know, looking at the bench here as a whole, DJ Chark, that's a great guy. Most people would have him in the starting lineup. You can afford to have him on your bench. That's a wonderful thing in case of injury. Carry on Johnson, there's question marks there. Justin Jefferson, you know, he may have some pressure on him, but not as much. He's got Alan Thielen on the other side. And then J.K. Dobbins, you know, the sooner he can get on the field, the better. I think there's some pass blocking issues there, but he's definitely going to be involved in the offense. Overall, I give this team this draft. I give them a, I give them an A as well. I, I like what they did here, and I know I picked out a flaw in in uh, Waller here, but they backed that up nice with Fant, so I think that overcomes that mistake there. And I'm not going to, I was there, I went and called it a mistake. Sorry, that that short. Anyway, <laughs> I think I think it's an A as well. I, I like the, I like the draft. Yeah, this is a newcomer to the draft, Matt SF, and uh, I want to shout out Matt. He was super. I think he was nervous about. Uh, what we were going to say, because uh, he was like, oh, man, here we go. But, uh, I mean, Mike, you know, like I said, we got a bunch of leagues to get through, so I'm going to be uh, yeah, I'm gonna be kind of rapid here because, uh, you, you know, you put a lot out there and said a lot of great things, and I agree with it. I'm going to give my – I'm going to give Matt an A as well. I'm going to give Matt an A. I thought about giving him an A-plus even. So, you know, and, and, and that's – you know, I, I, like, I like this all the way through. And you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to believe in it. So I'm giving, I'm giving you an A-plus, Matt. I like it. I like it all the way. I mean, Adam Thielen, if he could separate himself and somebody can step up there, you got Justin Jefferson who could be uh, who could be a help to him in, in the new number two in Minnesota. You got Clyde Edwards Hilaire who is fantastic. You know, you brought in uh, Kyler Murray. There's a lot of Michael Thomas. There's a lot of good to be had here. Josh Jacobs, DK Metcalf. Uh, you got Drew Brees on your bench, which is insanity. Michael Gallup, DJ Chark. I like it. Uh, TJ Hawkinson. Hopefully he'll step up and carry on. He'll stay healthy and get some time with DeAndre Swift, but I like this, uh, Mike. So we'll we'll be running through these uh, a little bit quicker. I don't want to have less analysis, but we'll just spend a little bit less time on these to make sure we get through everybody as we have uh, five leagues. And this is the first league we're doing Q's Contenders. I'll hand it off to you for the Golden Bears. Yeah, Lamar Jackson is going to be an excellent dig here. That's, that's great as well. Kamara, Kenyon Drake, I think we haven't seen the best of him yet. Mike Evans, he's a little dinged up right now, but I think he's going to be fine. Allen Robinson, you know, I, I, again, hit or miss. Dan said it before with the Chicago wide receivers not being consistent. And Gronk, this is the big question everybody's been asking me. Where do I take Gronk? What's Gronk going to do? I think you're going to have some inconsistency there because I think Brady is going to be like a kid in a candy store for the first time. His eyes are going to be wide open. When you have the receivers and the targets that they have with Chris Godwin, you know, when you got a guy who's brand new to the team and Brady's already adopted him like his little brother calling him Scooter, that guy's going to get the ball in Scotty Miller. So there's options there. Leonard Fournette comes in. He's going to take a lot of the goal line work and the short yardage work as well, I, I, I would see. So there's some question marks and consistency, but I do like Gronk. A.J. Brown, I think we haven't seen the best of him yet. He's a nice up-and-coming receiver. Jarvis Landry as well, but I'm looking at Julian Edelman on the bench. David Johnson, I thought, had a, had a great performance last night considering they don't have an offensive line. And the pick I like on the bench the best, Hayden Hurst. I think he arguably can be a top three tight end by season's end. You may find yourself, Golden Bears, putting Hayden Hurst in the lineup sooner rather than later instead of Gronk, believe it or not. Alexander Madison's a nice backup piece, a nice piece in case Dalvin Cook goes down. And let's face it, Dalvin Cook might go down. I think this is the best team I've seen yet on this draft. I'm going to give it an A+. Plus. I might give it an A-plus here to the Golden Bears. The Golden Bears getting an A-plus as we look at this, uh, you know, Lamar Jackson, Alvin Kamara, Kenyon Drake, love it all. Mike Evans, healthy. He's going to be dangerous. I like Gronk. Uh, A.J. Brown is one of the young receivers in Tennessee that might actually get it done when the other ones haven't. Uh, Saints defense and special teams is multiple with a guy like Taysom Hill and everything they have there. Matt Ryan being on your bench. Uh, David Johnson and Latavius, uh, you know, Latavius Murray. We saw some good things done by by David Johnson in, uh, in this game, uh, the opener against, uh, you know, with Houston at Kansas City. Actually saw more than I thought we would in some open holes that were created and some opportunities that were created. So uh, Mike giving an A-plus to this one. 
I am going to, and Matt Gay's obviously got to get moved here as he was the kicker for the Bucks, and now he's a free agent. I'm going to give this draft an A. You know, Lamar Jackson is a big part of this, bringing him in, but you were able to stay uh, stay good after this and didn't get overhyped on the fact that you got Lamar, uh, getting Kamara, getting Drake, and all of that, and uh, doing some other good things. Alexander Madison and Hayden Hurst. I like the bench. One of the one of the uh, strongest benches, so I'll give this an A. Uh, Beville Horton, what do you have for this one, Mike? Yeah, Russell Wilson's an underrated quarterback. He's usually good to finish as a top 10 quarterback, so it's a fine, safe pick there. Derrick Henry, I'm unsure he's going to be able to follow up last year, but you know, every time I see this cat, he does something different, but it looks the same. He's running touchdowns. He's running people over, so I like that a lot. Joe Mixon, I think he's going to offer a lot for Joe Burrow to lean on. I think that's good. I think they're going to concentrate on a heavy workload from Joe Mixon in Cincinnati, so that's good. Tyree Kill, he's Tyree Kill. He's going to get you a touchdown anywhere between 70 and 120 yards, and that's what you need. You need a guy like that that you can count on game in, game out. Cooper Cup, I don't think we've seen the best of him yet either. However, he's going to be leaned on, and he's going to be pressured a lot more because everybody knows who he is now. Tyler Higby, I'm not sure he's going to continue to be able to put up the numbers he was. I think Gerald Everett is going to get some more share there. So just be cautious. Be on the lookout there. Melvin Gordon, again, question mark. How many touches is he going to get? How is that high altitude going to affect him when he's on carry 21? You know, Philip Lindsay is still there to share some of that workload. Keenan Allen, I think he's undervalued. But with a quarterback situation, again, in, in, in uh, Los Angeles for the Chargers, there's some question marks there, but I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna be fine. I think he's gonna be a good addition to your team here. Terry McLaren, I like him a lot. You may find yourself subbing McLaren in for uh, a Keenan Allen, believe it or not, in certain situations. Darius Slayton, he's supposed to step up this year. We'll see. Jordan Howard's in a committee situation. Curtis Samuel had a bad camp, from what I'm hearing, and he hasn't looked very good. A lot of times when you hear that, the guy turns out a Pro Bowl season, so don't give up on that. And Adrian Peterson, I think he's going to continue to shock us at 155 years old. The guy has no quit in him. The guy the guy has no stop in him, and i got to appreciate that. I, I would keep him on my bench and spot start him as well. I think this team is a solid B+. Plus. I like it a lot. Um, just not the best team in the league, unfortunately, but I think this, this, league can, this team can contend as well. Uh, Mike giving a B plus, and I will not be giving one on this because I aided uh, Jared Horton in drafting. So Mike uh, giving them a B plus in this. I uh, tried to tried to look out for him as I was uh, was doing my team as well. So Mike giving them a B plus, and the Golden Bears. I want to shout them out. Uh, the Golden Bears owned by Eric. I want to say make sure I say this right. Eric Kolhep, uh, and he is one of the newcomers to the league as well for the Cuse contenders. So Cuse contenders there. And, uh, Mike, I do want to uh, jump into the next one. We're going to be going through these. That was that was the first league we did. So we're going to go through these uh, a little bit more rapid uh, to make sure that we get to everybody. We don't want to miss a single league owner. That is our promise that we will talk about every single league. So we're going to do exactly that. Mike, I'll hand it off to you here. Uh, with that being said, for the next one, and that would be to take a look at uh, at this this league. And this league will start with Home for the Galladay's. And this is going to be the Gridiron Gurus. What do you have for this? Yeah, home for the holidays again. You got the Kansas City quarterback. You're going to be fine. The question marks on this team are running back, but uh, you know you got to stretch somewhere. Sometimes you got to take some chances. And should Derrick Henry and Fournette have a good year, you're going to be fine. Galladay, top 10 receiver. DK Metcalf, I like him. He's got a lot of games. Mark Andrews, top three. You know, A.J. Brown, again, I think A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf are like the same guy. Kareem Hunt, that's a guy. That's a good guy to have on your flex. I think he's going to surprise some people. I think we're going to see some more touches from him. Jerry Judy, I like the opportunity there, especially with uh, Cortland Sutton getting hurt. I think he's going to surprise some people. Worried about David Montgomery on the bench with the lower extremity injury again. But I like C.D. Lamb and I like Hunter Henry on the bench. So, Pretty solid team, up and down. I'll give it a B minus. I like it. That's okay. So Mike, uh, Mike providing a B minus for this. This is this is my team in this league. So I will not be uh, giving my uh, draft assessment of it. And uh, and so Mike giving that a B minus. Uh, next one up is Team West. What do you have for this one, Mike? The 
Deshaun Watson, we talked about that. He may have an underwhelming year this year, but, you know, he's going to do what he can do with what he's got. And uh, what he's got is no offensive line, so that's a worry. Alvin Kamara, I think he's worthy of a top four player in, in the past four or five years. I don't see how you can not look at this guy and say, yeah, that's my number one pick, other than if you take Christian McCaffrey, maybe, or Zeke. I like Austin Eckler. I, I think he's huge. Have you seen this guy? This guy is huge. He's big. He's getting bigger every year. Calvin Ridley, T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton I'm a little worried about. I think he might be getting, missing a step there, and he's got Paris Campbell there as well to, to pressure him. Michael Pittman, they're going to try to get the targets to them as well. So I'm a little bit worried with that, believe it or not, with T.Y. Hilton. Travis Kelsey I like a lot. Aaron Jones, again, there's some question marks with A.J. Dillon, but I think he's going to be fine. Raheem Mozart, even though it's a committee situation, he's the guy to own. Melvin Gordon, I like that. Michael Gallup, Nicole Hardman, Jar- Jar- Jarvis Henry, or Jarvis Henry, listen to me, Jarvis Landry. Yeah, I like this team. I think I think this team will get a B- minus as well. This is a solid team. This team can, can contend with a couple wise lineup picks week to week. This team will make the playoffs and do well, so I'll give it a B- minus as well. Yeah, I mean, looking through this, uh, you know, I, I like I like obviously uh, Deshaun Watson, Alvin Kamara, uh, Austin Eckler. I'm not as sold on him, but I do think he's uh, talented. He'll do some good things. Uh, Kelvin, I just don't see him as an every down back. Kelvin Ridley, uh, T. Y. Hilton, Travis Kelsey. I like these. Uh, Raheem Mostert. I'm not as as high on him as you are, Mike, but I do think he's worth the pick, and I did pick him up in my final draft that I had uh, with the Marywood alumni. Bears defense led by Khalil Mack. Smart Justin Tucker, my favorite kicker in the game. So you're going to give this a B minus. I am going to give Team West for Mark West, who's been with me since day zero up here. I think it's been nine years up here. I'm going to give him a B. The Wildcats Pizza Pub. What do you have for this one? Yeah, this is a nice team here. With, you know, you got Brady with the with the Bucks team QB, Barkley and Chubb. I mean, that's almost unheard of. Then you got Godwin and Diggs, Gronk. Cam Akers, you know, he's going to have a tough time getting on the field to start with. Look for Malcolm Brown, so you may want to make an adjustment definitely for week one. From what I hear out of uh, the Rams camp, that's going to be, the, they're going to try to get him on a, the ball, Cam Akers, and situational type things, but, you know, he's not going to be the solid every down back and, and take over the job right away. And that's just in my opinion, but, you know, I've, I've been wrong before. Ronald Jones is going to have the same problem getting on the field with Fournette in his way. Tevin Coleman, I like that pick there because he could be a sneaky guy. Don't forget, in San Fran, even though I'm high on Mozart, they do have Tevin Coleman. They do have uh, Jeff Wilson. They do have uh, McKinnon there as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of guys that can take over in any game, have a, have the game of their life. I like the bench with Jared Cook here. I, I, I think this is a team with some smart lineups and some maybe a move or two throughout the year can do well, make the playoffs as well. I'll give this team a B-minus as well. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, Danny Tome, the owner of the uh, Wildcats Wildcats uh, Pizza Pub, Wildcats Sports Pub on thirty six eighty Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York. That always brings that is always uh, bringing you the coverage. Anytime Mike and I do fantasy football, it's brought to you by the Wildcat, and so we thank them for all of that uh, that they have given over these last few years. So uh, I helped Danny with the back half of his team uh, he he drafted in the uh, first half of this the first nine rounds i helped him in the back half so i will talk about this a little bit because he did uh, picks on his own and uh, based on what he did in the early part of the draft and then looking through uh, all of this ultimately uh, i will say you know i think i think danny drafted an a i think overall it is a it is a b i think he did a lot of good stuff in the beginning, and you know, you try to get them when you, what you can. It's uh, it's hard to draft for two. It's definitely not the easiest thing to do, but you know, Danny did a good job, and I'm going to uh, give him a B in this. So B's so far coming through here. We'll see if anybody gets an A in the Gridiron Gurus League as we head to the next portion of it, Mike. And I'll hand it off to you. Living on Hilaire. What do you have for this one? Living on Hilaire. Hold on, I might have the wrong. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, yeah. Kyler Murray. Wow, CEH, Edward Solaire, Miles Sanders, who I like a lot. I think you're going to see a lot of work out of him. Michael Thomas, number one receiver in the league. Amari Cooper's got a lot to prove. He's a little bit dinged up right there, and there's a lot of guys. It's almost like Kansas City. They got T.D. Lamb, they got Gallup, they got Zeke. Look out for Blake Jarwin at the Cowboys, too. Underrated guy, maybe on the waiver wire in the league as well. 
but I'm looking at the tight end that you have in Gusecki. He should get a target share if he can get past injuries as well. Uh, so this team may want to go pick up another tight end right away and be on the lookout for injury uh, updates with Cortland Sutton. I see he's on the bench here. Terry McLaurin I like a lot. Antonio Gibson I like a lot. I think people overdrafted him. I think he had a he peaked at the right time when most of the drafts were happening. There was a lot of talk around him. Look out for Bryce Love to take over a lot of targets, a lot of shares there. Look at Jonathan Taylor on the bench and DJ Chark on the bench. I like this team up and down. I think this team has a solid chance to do some damage in the playoffs with the right team management throughout the year. I give this team a B plus. All right, a B-plus coming from Mike on Living on Hilaire. This is for Greg Eckert, who's another newcomer to the league. A B-plus going to him for this. A team only has one tight end in Mike Gusecki, so uh, something to look to, like Mike said, maybe go uh, outside and bring somebody else in. Uh, they do have three. They chose to go three quarterbacks instead of grabbing another tight end. Uh, I do like the fact, I mean, you got Joe Burrow and Carson Wentz on your bench. you got Kyler Murray starting. There's some good to be had there. Uh, DJ Moore, I think he, I, I feel good about him. Some upside this year. You got Michael Thomas, Miles Sanders, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. It's going to be hard for me to not uh, give the. I'm going to give this team, Mike. You're giving them a B plus. I'm going to give Greg Eckert a uh, an A minus for this. Uh, what do you have for? Te- Go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, 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 quick question. Quick question. Is there negative points for interceptions in this league? There is not. Okay, I was going to say, because that would make it easy, because even, even Manning threw 20 interceptions in his rookie year. I would consider dropping Burrow, keeping Wentz, and the other Cardinals QB, and possibly on the waiver wire as a Blake Jarwin. I would I would make that move, drop Burrow, pick up Jarwin. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what we have right now, a, a B plus and a B plus and, and, and an A minus that we have here uh, for Greg Eckert's living on Hilaire. Team Darby, what do you have for this one? Yeah, I like this team a lot because, again, Russell Wilson, he's underrated in my in my opinion. But Dalvin Cook is the injury guy you got to worry about. But, again, he's a contract year, so he's going to do amazing things like Superman. Devin Singletary, he's got Zach Moss breathing down his back, so he's in for a share of the carries. It's going to be a committee situation. That might be an overvalued pick. Tyree Kill, you can't go wrong. Mike Evans, I like the back-to-back. Darren Waller, we spoke about that in the previous league. I think that's an overdraft. I think he's overhyped. We've liked him in the past. I continue to like him. It's just I don't think see him as a top five like most people do. I see him as a top ten or twelve. And Dylan, you can't go wrong there. David Johnson, even with that spotty offensive line last night, we saw he did a great job running the ball. Robert Woods, I like. Octavius Murray, that's a smart smart pickup there because he's going to get some goal line carries. And if anything should happen to Alvin Kamara, that's the guy. You have the guy on your bench for New Orleans. For New Orleans. A.J. Brown, I like. A.J. Dillon, I like that as a speculative pick. Terry on Johnson, there's some question marks there. He may start out the year. He may be the week one or week two play for you outside of Singletary because, well, once Peterson gets involved and once Swift gets up to speed, you know, he may be squoze out. He may be the odd man out there. I like this team. I'm not sure this team is a total contender, but they could do some damage with the right move here or there. I give this team a B-. minus. Yeah, Mike, and it's interesting you say that because I'm going to give them a B- minus as well uh, to look at Team Darby here. I, I do like, you know, obviously the, the Russell Wilson. I like the Russell Wilson uh, pick. I think I like uh, Russell Wilson this year, fantasy-wise, now uh, more than ever. And maybe that's because, and I think it has to do with the weapons that he has out there. And, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, I, I think that there's a lot in the tank. But Devin Singletary, that's a question mark on how he's going to split time with Zach Moss. He's in his second season, Zach in his first Delvin Cook has to stay healthy. I like the Tyree Kill and the Mike Evans picks. Uh, Adam Thielen is a question mark of, you know, he has talent, but who's going to be the other guy, and are they going to help him? Now that Diggs isn't there, David Johnson, as much as he had a nice showing in this first game of Houston at Kansas City for the 2020-2021 season, I'm still concerned of how is David Johnson going to stay consistent? Is Robert Woods going to become the guy because Cooper Cup struggles to stay healthy? Latavius Murray is the second half of a team that is looking to a one-two punch, but a lot of it on Alvin Kamara's side. So I'm going to give the team a B- as well. The Binghamton CMC sweepstakes, what do you have for this one? 
Yeah, well, I like CMC. I liked it a lot. Obviously, that was the first pick. I liked the Chris Carson on the way back. I've been on him for a while when no one knew who he was, and I continue to like that cat. I think he's a great running back. Devontae Adams, number two wide receiver on the board through most leagues. George Kittle, top three tight end as well. He was overdrafted, and some, some leagues had him ranked and drafted above Kelsey, which I thought was hilarious, but it is what it is there. Juju Smith-Schuster, great guy to have in the flex. Hollywood Brown, great guy to have in the flex as well. Uh, looking at the bench, Mark Ingram, Patrick Lindsay. I think those are solid plays. I think Mark Ingram's going to get more workload than we think, especially up front above J.K. Dobbins. Again, you don't know pass blocking in the league. You're not on the field, so they're going to put him J.K. Dobbins in situations to be successful until he's totally up to speed. Remember, a lot of these rookies, they didn't get the normal camp that you normally get. We got an abbreviated camp. We didn't have a rookie camp this year, so the learning curve is a lot steeper coming out of the box. They do have Zach Moss on the bench. I like that a lot. Maybe there's a trade in the future here with Darby, so he's protected with Singletary. Should Moss take over? You know, this is a solid team. I give this team a B-plus as well. Oh, well, as well. Listen to me. I give this team a B-plus. I think they have an opportunity to do some damage here. I like doing it. I, I would I would seek out Team Darby and see if there's a trade we could pull off with Zach Moss. Yeah, you know, interesting here to uh, to see this. So uh, you said you said Mike once again. Uh, let everybody you're giving a, a B or a B minus. A B, B plus. B plus. B plus. So a B plus here that's coming to. We just had a uh, message come in here, so I want to make sure that I make a uh, make a note here and want to thank want to thank Greg for being a part of this and uh, greg saying good luck this weekend dan i hope you both have a great football filled weekend and you too greg thank you so much uh his team once again living on hilaire so mike mike giving a b a b plus to uh to to this side of things that we both gave team darby which is paul darby's team and i want to make mention of that Uh, paul another newbie in this greg a newbie uh in joining our league uh getting getting into this thing so b minuses for Team Darby, uh, the Binghamton CMC sweepstakes, Mike giving them a B plus. This was the number one pick. Another newcomer, uh, Myron Kittle. And looking at Myron's team, I uh, like the Devontae Adams and Christian McCaffrey picks here. Uh, I'm a fan of, you know, obviously uh, the Bills defense, uh, George Kittle, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. It'll be interesting to see what he can do here. And, you know, quarterback-wise, a little bit of question marks here with uh, Matt Ryan and Derek Carr. So I'm going to give this team... Uh, overall, looking at them, I will uh, I will give them a B. And looking at John Brown, Austin Hooper, I'm gonna I'll put a little plus next to it. So I'll agree with you, Mike, on this one. I'm gonna give this team a B plus, and we will go to the uh, last part portion here of the Gridiron Gurus League, and I'll hand it off to you. A team has no name. Uh, I think it's a play off of the uh, I think it's a play off of HBO's Game of Thrones where they said a girl has no name. So what do you have on this one, Mike? Well, it's a stretch. I can honestly say I'm probably the only guy in the country that hasn't seen any of Game of Thrones, so I didn't catch that. I thought it was you, too. Like, you know, that song about no name or... Anyway. Look, <laughs> the Saints. Saints Drew Brees, fantastic quarterback. I think he's going to be great. Hey, look, he's great half the year at least. You know why? Because half the games are at home. He plays a lot better at home than he does on the road. So look out for that with the matchups. I see you have uh, Cam Newton for the Patriots QB on the bench, so that's a solid, that's an underrated value pick in my mind, but we don't know yet. We, we, there's a lot of unanswered questions. We had no preseason, so we don't know what we're going to get from Cam. Zeke Elliott, again, top three pick in my opinion. That's a great guy to have on your team. He's going to catch the ball and run the ball, even with all the targets that they have on that team. James Conner continues to impress me year after year. D-Hop, you wonder if he's going to be able to put up the same numbers as he grows his relationship with Kyler Murray, who should have an MVP season out in Arizona. Odell Beckham, I still think he's a solid performer. It's just you know, are they going to the, the success in Cleveland is going to be based on them running the ball, and they have two great running backs, and if they run the ball effectively with Chubb and Hunt, I think it's going to open things up on the play action, which is where Mayfield needs to be, not in the pocket scrambling around for his life. So if they give Mayfield that running game, he's going to be able to do a lot of play action. That's where Odell is going to get paid. So that's a fine pick there. Evan Ingram is an excellent tight end to have. I think he's a top 10 tight end. Le'Veon Bell, Keenan Allen, those are fine additions. I like backing up things on the bench with J.K. Dobbins, 
and Keel Harry. Again, question marks in New England, so we'll see. Adrian Peterson, I like that this owner made some speculative picks, a speculative pick on Bell. So there's a lot of what ifs. And with the right team management, this team could do some damage in the playoffs. But it's hard to tell with all the unseen and unknowns. I'm going to give this team a B minus, but it can get up to an A by the end of the season with the right moves. And uh, Julian Wiggum will appreciate that. And that is the uh, gentleman that has a segment uh, with me, the the midweek blitz that is going to be right before you every single week. Mike here on Wednesdays on Wake Up Call are going to be jam packed with football. So Wednesdays on Wake Up Call, make sure you stay tuned for that. I feel like I'm. Feel like I'm doing like a you know like a CBS sitcom night or something like that. Wednesdays on Wake Up Call with Midweek Blitz and the Fantasy Football Power Hour. Uh, Mike giving this team a B minus. I'm going to give this team a. I'm going to give this team a B. I'm going to go a little bit ahead here. Uh, I you know so I got questions, but I also like some of the stuff. I like Breeze, uh, Zeke, James Conner, DeAndre Hopkins. Like I said, it might take a little bit of time. Odell's a question mark because Cleveland is in and of itself is a question mark. Evan Ingram is the best receiver. On the Giants, I like the Hunter Renfro pick. I like the Enkeel Harry pick, as well as you know going out there and I mean Keenan Allen getting him later on. Not a big fan of Le'Veon Bell, so I'm going to go B on this. Team Lynch, Mike. I will not be uh, voting in this one because I aided Team Lynch in in, in this. But uh, James Lynch's draft. What do you think about this one? Well, going back to team has no name. Just briefly. And I know I mentioned speculative picks, and and you kind of went that way as well. I do want to say that's how you win. You have to make speculative picks. You have to step out there. Or something you got to get those guys that nobody else sees coming. So hats off to that owner again for making some speculative picks because that's the way you're going to win in fantasy football. Going over to Team Lynch, I like Dak Prescott a lot. I think the Cowboys have made a mistake year after year. That that price tag keeps getting bigger and bigger for next year. So we'll see what happens. But I like Dak. How can you not with the team around him? Josh Jacobs, strong performer, going to continue to grow in Las Vegas. Joe Mixon, solid guy, can run the ball, and they're going to lean heavily on him. I think that's a solid pick. The receivers, Julio Jones, he's going to continue to put up solid numbers. Uh, Allen Robinson's a guy that, again, we don't know what kind of Chicago quarterbacking we're going to have. Supposedly, Trubisky has stepped it up. We're going to see Zach Ertz. I'm wondering if he's going to be Ertz all year. That happens. He goes on the IR. Stuff happens. You backed it up fine with Hayden Hurst. I think you're going to find yourself at times questioning whether you should start Hurst or Ertz. And that's a funny thing to have to come to that conclusion each week. Is it Ertz or Hurts? Hurts or Hurts? Look, Todd Gurley, I think he's underrated. Tyler Lockett, I think he's underrated as well. I think his team did well backing themselves up. I, I like the Tony Pollard. Possibly there's a trade for the handcuff with, uh, with, with Zeke. With a, a team that has no name, maybe there's something that could be done there. So open that up. Brandon Cooks, I don't know. He's a speedster still, but let's face it, he's not D-Hop. So there's some questions up and down the roster. I like some of the chances here. I'll give this team a B-minus. All right, B-minus going for uh, James Lynch's team that I helped uh, in the draft. So uh, Team Lynch getting a B minus from Mike Sofka. And like I said, if I if, if it's my team or I've helped the team, I, I will, I you know, if I've if I've done the majority of kind of like helping out and whatnot, I will not be uh, giving myself a grade because I don't think it's the right thing to do. Mike and I are going to take a step aside for a fast break. When we come back, we will start off and we will go through the grades for the Captains on Call League, which features the teams more swift than your gallop, underdogs, Team Lasher, Didn't I Get Lucky, Team Cologne, as well as Fort, Fort Netflix and Chill, Team Fernandez, and the Tallahassee Hero Knowles. All of that's coming up right after this fast break where sports meets life on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. We thank you so much for being here and spending some time with us, as always. And we will be back after this fast break after you hear from some of our great partners in the community. Cafe Cabal Mobile Cafe brings the cafe experience to you. We'll roll out to your neighborhood or office, ready to serve our locally crafted espresso bar to our loyal patrons. Inquire at CafeCabal.com. Cafe Cabal, coffee for the soul.
Ron Paz Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory, located on 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, is home to over 40 flavors with more than 200 flavors in their total wheelhouse. Sky's the limit for this sweet and savory Central New York company. Keep it local at your parties, fundraisers, wedding showers, baby showers, and more by calling 315-450-MA-PA. That's 315-450-6272 for popcorn bars with custom flavors and colors at your upcoming event. Make sure to visit them on 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York. And for more information, go to maandpazsnacks.com. Ma and Paz Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. How corny are you? The Millhouse Market, located on 3790 New York 13 in Pulaski, New York, is worth the drive every time. Download their app on the Google Play or Apple App Store today, and you'll have their entire menu at your fingertips from all of their breakfast items as well as their brick oven pizzas, over 30 sandwiches named after the families that helped to settle what is today's Pulaski, their homemade breads, their homemade desserts, and so much more, their quinoa bowls and healthy bowls and salads. You have something for everyone on the menu and flavors and concoctions that you will not find anywhere else. The creations at the Millhouse Market are absolutely worth the drive every time. And I wouldn't tell you unless I go and I went there today and got, or got went there this week and got something I've never gotten before. Their, uh, their meatball sandwich, which was absolutely fantastic and very happy that I made that decision. I'll be going back very, very soon to get something very special. So thank you to the Millhouse Market with contactless pay as well as drive up. You don't have to get out of your car, grab your food, and go. The Millhouse Market providing a great experience for all of us and ingraining themselves in our community, making them worth the drive every time. 3790 New York 13 in Pulaski, New York. With that being said, Mike and I are back at it, so giving you our thoughts on these teams as we are into that portion of today's show inside of Mon Paz Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factories. What's popping? Letting you know our thoughts on these leagues that we have. Uh, and these leagues, uh, you know, obviously within the wake up call fantasy football challenge that we have, and giving you our, our take on each of these leagues. So I want to thank Mike for all of this as we get set to go to our next league. And Mike, we will go. We will go to that league and be jumping into that immediately here. So I will send it off with uh, starting things off with. Didn't I get lucky with the captains on call league? I will. I will send it to you with the. Didn't I get lucky team? What are your thoughts on this roster? Yeah, first of all, that meatball sandwich you were talking about from from the Mills Market I, that made me really hungry. I'm coming up there right <laughs> away after this for one. Okay, you're welcome. Hey, didn't sir. I get lucky? <laughs> Didn't I get lucky? Yeah, I think they got lucky. I think they got lucky in getting Kyler Murray. Again, he's a guy who's going to have an MVP caliber season. I like Kamara a lot, top running back. Derrick Henry, I have question marks. Can he continue to do it? And every time I question him, he does it. So that's a good pick there as well. Stephon Diggs, T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton, question marks with the team around him, the new relationship with the new quarterback, Philip Rivers. I like Chris Carson. Tyler Higby, I have question marks just based on the – growth I'm seeing in Gerald Everett there, so there's going to be some more split, and a question mark on Devin Singletary with Zach Moss breathing down his neck, but looking on the bench, Kenny Galladay, that guy should be in a lineup somewhere, I would take Singletary out and put Galladay in in the flex, I would make sure that Julian Edelman gets consideration as well as Boyd each week on the matchup Looking at Christian Kirk on the bench, David Montgomery, that's the guy with the lower extremity injury, and Dallas Goddard on the bench is tight end. You can't go wrong there. I think this team is a solid B, and this team could do some damage in the playoffs with the right moves throughout the season. So, Mike, Mike giving, uh, didn't I get lucky? A solid B in this one. Uh, didn't I get lucky getting that? Uh, I would say, uh, you know, looking at this team, I like the Kyler Murray pick, Alvin Kamara, uh, Derek Henry, Stephon Day. Stefan Diggs, uh, happy with all of these. Kenny Galladay, uh, not a bad person to have. Julian Edelman, uh, pretty good here. Uh, Giants quarterback as your backup. Eh, you know, I like Daniel Jones, but this is going to rely on the offensive line and, and what they can do. So I'm going to give I'm going to give this team a uh, a B minus, and we'll jump to we'll jump to team uh, Cologne. So didn't I get lucky? Is a uh, Nate Tamalade's team with a B and a B minus. We'll go to team Cologne, Mike. What do you have for this? Yeah, Chiefs 
quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. You can't go wrong there. That guy's going to help carry this team. David Johnson performed a lot better than people thought with that spotty offensive line in Houston, so that's a fine pick. Josh Jacobs, that's a great pick there as well. Marquise Hollywood Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster. You got to question Schuster. Is he going to be a solid number one? And Zach Ertz, is he going to get hurt? Is this a guy who's going to stay healthy? You know, I'm looking on the bench here, and I see you got Hayden Hurst. You may find yourself with, again, Hurst and Hurst. Hurts and Hurts, this is a great combination to have. You may find yourself putting Hurts in above Hurts at some point. I think Hayden Hurst is going to have an outstanding year. He's primed to get a ton of targets, and he has the, the – you just watch. A lot of people don't see this guy coming. I saw him getting drafted out of South Carolina. Marwin Mack, solid guy. I think, though, you know, they're talking about uh, Jonathan Taylor taking over his job. That's a great possibility, but Marwin Mack's still going to get some touches there, so it's not a bad guy on the bench. Cooper Cup, we got to find a way to get this guy in the lineup. I see Todd Gurley in the flex. That's a good pick there. I don't know, Cooper Cup I may put in the lineup ahead of Lockett in the flex. But up and down, I'm looking at this team. This team's a good team. Mark Ingram on the bench. I give this team a B plus. Yeah, getting a B plus here for uh, Nicholas Colon uh, on his on his team. Uh, you know, so getting getting a B plus from Mr. Mike Sofka. I would say, you know, Pat Mahomes looking at this, Josh Jacobs, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. I like a, a lot of this coming through here. Uh, your backup quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers, who can get you 40, 47, 40, 50 points a game. And you got Pat Mahomes who can get you 50 in this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to agree with Mike uh, overall here. I'm going to give them a B plus as well. Uh, you know, some of their running backs, and Matt Breda, Marlon Mack, some questions that I have, but ultimately a deep team and at wide receiver, and I think that there's a lot of good to come from here. So B-plus. For Netflix and chill, Mike, what do you have for this one? Yeah, I like the name. I mean, that is creative. I like that name. I like it a lot. I'm looking at the, the Sean Watson, though. You know, I don't think you can put last night's performance. It's going to be indicative of the entire season. I think he's going to have a good year. It's just, again, that spotty offensive line, but – Clyde edwards is the man. We saw that last night. Had flashes of Emmett Smith. If they can keep him outside the tackle box, those short yardage situations are going to kill that cat. But, you know, when you put up 100-something yards in your debut on a Super Bowl champs and you're a rookie, that is, this is great. That's, that's awesome. Devontae Adams, one of the top two receivers. I like that as well. Ronald Jones, I'm worried about. I'm looking at the bench. You may find some Jonathan Taylor or Leonard Fournette. Before that, Ronald Jones, I would definitely put Fournette in above Ronald Jones to start the year. Um, looking up and down the roster here, I see some fine guys on the bench. Nothing really wows me, though. Nothing comes out and says, oh, my gosh, outside of Edwards Hilaire on, and Devontae Adams on this team. So with that being said, I'm going to give this team a B-. minus. Yeah, looking at looking at this team, like you said, I like Edwards Hilaire and Deshaun Watson. Uh, Devontae Adams are big on this. I, I'm a fan of D.K. Metcalf and Evan Engram. But ultimately, uh, Mike saying he's going to give this uh, team a B minus. I'm going to give this team a B. I think there's up some upside with Leonard Fournette, and we talk about speculation and taking some chances. Well, uh, Jonathan Taylor, as well as Fournette and Alexander Madison and Johnu Smith, taking some chances. I will give them a solid B in this case, and that is Zach Warner's team. Team Fernandez, what do you have for this one? Yeah, Lamar Jackson, he's going to rack up some points both on the ground and in the air. A lot of people underestimate his passing skills. You're going to see that open up a lot more this year. Because when they zig, you zag. Everybody's going to look for him running now. Now he's going to start to air it out more. So that's a great thing for Lamar Jackson owners. Saquon Barkley, one of the top running backs in the league. Miles Sanders, I like when you're able to do this. Two Penn State running backs. You have Saquon Barkley and Saquon Barkley Jr. and Miles Sanders. I love it. Calvin Ridley, I think he could have a better year than Julio Jones. He has got a lot of upside being on the opposite side of Julio Jones. Allen Robinson, question marks on the quarterback. Hunter Henry, I like that play a lot, but again, you, you got to consider the quarterback situation. You know, it's a new quarterback, a new relationship. Tyrod Taylor runs the ball, so we're just going to have to see on the Hunter Henry deal. I think he's a top 10 tight end, not a top 5. Keenan Allen's going to impress at times, but again, that same thing with the relationship with the quarterbacks. That's, that, you can't underestimate that. And there's no preseason to get that worked out. Le'Veon Bell, Le'Veon Bell is going to put up better numbers than people think. I like Le'Veon Bell. Looking at Kareem Hunt on the bench, I like that a lot. He's a, he's a good guy to have, and I like Zach Moss. Looking up and down, I'd have to give this team a B+. I think this team can do some damage. 
Yeah, and, uh, and and one of the other uh, gentlemen in this uh, as well, and I won't mention that because I know you still have to grade him, but uh, we helped in the creation of this team, so I will not be giving my thoughts, but I uh, I like the B+. Plus. Thank you, Mike. Tallahassee Hero Knowles, what do you have for this one? Yeah, I object to this team name being a lifelong Gator fan, <laughs> first off, but I won't hold that against the team owner in their team grade here. I'm looking at Russell Wilson, a quarterback, again, arguably a top-five quarterback year in, year out. Dalvin Cook, a bit injury prone, but he's in a contract year, so somehow he's going to contend to be the MVP, so that's a good pick as well. These guys always seem to perform in contract years. Looking at James Conner, solid running back. Tyreek Hill, he's the top guy. He's going to get you 100 yards and a touchdown every game. Amari Cooper, a little bit of question marks. He's stumbling a little bit, coming out of the blocks, dinged up a bit. C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, Zeke, Blake Jarwin. There's a lot of people to get the ball to, so We'll see how things progress for him throughout the year. Robert Woods, I like him a lot. Uh, looking at Brandon Cooks, there's question marks on him. He's got speed, but can he develop that relationship with Deshaun Watson? Cam Akers, speculative pick. He's going to have to be patient. There's a lot of upside with that guy, though. And being a PPR league, James White, this is a guy you got to get in the lineup. I would put him in the lineup above James Crowder, definitely. This team with the right plays can do some damage in the playoffs. I'm going to give this team a B plus. Yeah, a lot, a lot of Bs going throughout uh, throughout these last couple leagues. Uh, Mike, Mike giving a B plus to this one. Uh, this is Evan Rosenthal's team who helped in the creation of Team Fernandez with me. Uh, so he got a B plus in both here uh, from Mike. And uh, you know, for me to look uh, look throughout this team, I like Russell Wilson. Uh, Delvin Cook got to stay healthy. Obviously, he got two former Florida State running backs because. He is a Florida State alum himself and a big fan, uh, Delvin Cook and Cam Akers. And so good picks. Like I said, you can't always go emotionally. I like these picks, though. I think Delvin Cook would be good anywhere. I've drafted Cam Akers. I like that. Uh, Cooks, he was happy, was on his bench in yesterday's game because Cooks only scored four points. And, you know, as far as quarterbacks go, I like the Russell Wilson move. Matt Stafford, you know, kind of juries out. I like it, but it's not great. Uh, I like the Amari Cooper pick here. Jamison Crowder, it's hard when it comes to the Jets. I like Jamison Crowder, but I just feel like the Jets don't do too much. I'm going to give this team a B, as uh, Mike is going to give them a B plus, and we will go to uh, the other part of Captain's on call. More swift than your Gallup. What do you have for this one, Mike? Yeah, I like the team name. That's awesome. I like Brady at quarterback, Zeke and Chubb. What's not to like there? Julio Jones, Chris Godwin, I think he could have a better year than Mike Evans this year. DJ Moore, solid guy, tops of the adjusted explosive index a couple years back. Melvin Gordon possibly in a timeshare with Philip Lindsay and some altitude questions. You know, when you're getting the ball 20 times in the game, that altitude can catch up to you. This is a fast game. Cortland Sutton a bit dinged up on the bench. Rob Gronkowski on the bench as well. I kind of like that because I'm not sure the year Darren Waller's going to have. I think he was overdrafted in a lot of leagues. Michael Gallup, you know, he, he could be a number one wide receiver on a lot of other teams. J.K. Dobbins, he's going to get some looks, but he's going to, before he takes a more full-time role, I think it's going to be the end of the year or next year, but he's going to have some fantastic opportunities to break one away. You watch this guy, every time he touches the ball, he's a danger to take it to the house. I like the speculative pick on A.J. Dillon and Robbie Anderson on the bench. I would give this team a B-minus. They got some work to do, but I think they can pull out a solid year. B minus, and that is my team name. That is my team and my team name. And I can tell you, Mike, that uh, that that team for me, I, I, it's it's the most names I've ever put of players that I've drafted into one name. And it took a little bit of time to figure it out. But DJ Moore, DeAndre Swift, and Michael Gallup more Swift than your Gallup. Mike gives it a B minus. Mike, the underdogs. What do you have for this one? Yeah, Carson Wentz, another underrated quarterback, but. You know, justifiably so with the fact that he can't seem to finish a year. So, you know, it's a, it's a good quarterback to have, and it's good that you backed him up with Josh Allen from Buffalo. But uh, Christian McCaffrey, he, he obviously has the number one pick in this draft. This is a great guy to have on your team, Austin Eckler. He's going to do a lot of damage. I spoke in the other league for Joshua Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y, is taking over the new Austin Eckler role. In Los Angeles, so keep an eye out for that name. Travis Kelsey, that's a great, great pick at tight end. You got Hopkins and Thielen. Again, Hopkins may have a down year from what we're used to as he continues to develop that relationship with the future MVP, Kyler Murray. A.J. Brown, Jarvis Landry, 
those are some I, those are upside names. These guys can really perform for you. Mark Andrews, I mean, how can you go wrong? You had a top three tight end. You know, you, you may look to trade one of those guys, Kelsey, uh, or, you know, Mark Andrews, and maybe get some upgrade somewhere else on the team, maybe upgrade a, another running back or another receiver. You know, when you when you find your fortune, it's important to know when to hold them and when to fold them, just like poker. So you got to do the right thing. I would trade one of those guys. There's probably a better tight end on the, on the block that you could have as a backup. Right now you got two starters there, so one of them's going to waste. Uh, and, and that's not a bad thing necessarily, because again, we talked about it. At least you're not on the opposite team killing me in a week. DJ Chark on the bench, that's a good guy to have, but, you know, I might, I may keep an eye on that with AJ Brown and, and Jarvis Landry in the flex. I may have to make a move there. Jordan Howard, Marvin Jones. I give this team a B minus. I think this team can do, can do some things, but they're gonna, they're gonna have to make a trade and a pickup here or there. Mike gives him an A minus. Uh, you know, with the flex being able to put B minus. Oh, B minus, pardon. B minus. Uh, Mike giving them a B minus, and I was thinking about mine that I just wrote up here. Uh, Mike giving them a B minus. Uh, I think it's important that we have the flex position where you can play running back, wide receiver, or tight end, so he can play Kelsey and Andrews together. Uh, I think there's a lot of talent throughout this team. Obviously, this is the number one pick. This is Phil Carpenter's team. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. I like it. I like Josh Allen on the team as well. I, I like the guys that he has backing up his starters. I like his starters. I'm going to give him an, an A-. minus. So B- minus and an A- minus for the underdogs, Phil Carpenter's team. Team Lasher, what do you have for this one? Yeah, Dak Prescott, underrated quarterback with all the weapons around him. How can he not possibly be a top five? So you're safe there. Joe Mixon's going to get a heavy workload with the rookie quarterback. Aaron Jones, there's some talk of A.J. Dillon taking his job. I don't see that. I think Aaron Jones is going to step up and rise above the situation. Michael Thomas, best wide receiver in the game. Will Fuller, can he stay healthy? Can he stay healthy for six games? I think you get six games out of this cat. You're doing well. Hopefully you didn't overdraft him. George Kittle, one of the top three tight ends in the game. Hopefully that wasn't an overdraft as well. I've seen him overdrafted all over the place. Don't get me wrong, I like Kittle. I've been on him for years, but you know, you, you got to take people where you're going to get value. Hopefully, you got some value there. Tariq Cohen, you know, with the question marks on David Montgomery and possibly Ryan Nall coming in because David Montgomery with the lower extremity injury, you know, that could be an important pick there. The Ravens D, I think that's a solid pick. Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, I like the upside and the speculation on the bench. Alan Lazard, I like that play as well. I like Alan Lazard a lot. Justin Jefferson, he's going to do great this year as a rookie because he's got Alan Thielen on Adam Thielen on the other side drawing the number one corner. C.D. Lamb, I like the speculative picks on this. I like Antonio Gibson, but again, don't get too hyped on this cat. Give him time. You know, when he was at Memphis, he, he had 51 touches. He scored 17 times on 51 touches. One out of every three times this cat touched the ball, he scored. So he's an explosive guy. That's going to be tempered a little bit in the NFL, and Bryce Love's going to get some of the share of the workload. So be patient with that guy, but keep him on your team. I think it's a solid team. I think his team deserves an A. Yeah, you know, that coming uh, from uh, team last year, uh, Justin last year. So, Mike, giving them an A in this respect. Uh, you know, I like the Dak Prescott pick. Uh, not as sold uh, on Joe Mixon, but they'll lean on him a little bit more with a rookie quarterback. Aaron Jones, I do think, will be ousted eventually by A.J. Dillon. I like the Michael Thomas and Will Fuller the fifth. George Kittle, a good pickup as well. Ravens defense. I like Henry Ruggs and Jerry Judy and Alan Lazard. Uh, a reach here to a lot of people, but not to Aaron Rodgers, who put him uh, number two on the depth chart just by going out and saying big things about it. Antonio Gibson, remember in Memphis, a team that I cover every single year for these last few years here, Memphis has Memphis had Daryl Henderson Jr., Tony Pollard, and Antonio Gibson. They're all in the NFL, and they all have an opportunity to strike. Tony Pollard will be involved in the game for the Cowboys. Daryl Henderson has the opportunity to still be involved, even though he had kind of uh, a, 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 a quiet year last year. And then we have Antonio Gibson with Adrian Peterson being gone, Darius Geis being sent away as well, that he will have the opportunity to take over. So uh, for Justin last year, I'm going to give this an A-. minus. And uh, Mike giving it an A, which means that Mike and I will now jump into our next league here as we give our draft grades inside of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. I appreciate you being here and uh, brought to you, as always, when we talk about fantasy by the Wildcat Sports Pub, 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York, doing a bonus 
uh, fantasy football coverage here, giving you our draft grades for every single fantasy owner that's drafted inside of the Wake Up Call Fantasy Football Challenge this year. So if you're in a Wake Up Call Fantasy League, you are being graded here today. And so we'll jump into the next one here. I know that this gave it away because I didn't change my name yet, Mike, but I will not be giving my thoughts on this because it's my team. In the Marywood Alumni League, Marywood University Alumni, I brought a bunch of people together that went to my same alma mater, and we all got together for the first time ever to play fantasy football, which is multi-layered and really cool in what we're going to be doing with this, and I'm excited for it. So looking forward to it. Team Tortora, what do you have for my team? Team Tortora. I would have never guessed that was your team, Dan. (laughs) Great team name. I will be changing (laughs) it very soon, but yeah. (laughs) <laughs> All right, Ru- Russell Wilson, solid quarterback. I like that top five guy. Christian McCaffrey, obviously the first pick in the draft. This is a guy that you have to have on your team, especially if you get the first pick. James Conner, solid running back. Devontae Adams, number two receiver. DeAndre Hopkins, again, you've got to get that relationship built with Kyler Murray. I think we're not going to have Ty- DeAndre Hopkins-esque numbers until that happens. It's going to be spotty. It's going to be up and down a little bit until that challenge is, is met, but Rob Gronkowski, again, this is a guy who you're going to have some questions. There's going to be some games where he's going to blow up, and then you're going to, oh, yeah, i got to play that guy. Then he's going to get seven targets and three catches for four yards and no touchdowns the next game. You're going to be like, what happened? Well, you're backing that up with Gusecki. If he can stay healthy, he might be the more consistent guy, but Gronk is going to be the higher ceiling guy. Chris Carson, I like him a lot. I've been on him for a few years. He's going to have a solid performance for you in the flex. And I'm looking at the the bench here, Henry Ruggs, Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson, again, temper your expectations, but he's explosive. Henry Ruggs, same thing. He's slotted as the number one receiver as a rookie. He's the fastest guy in the NFL with Tyreek Hill chomping at the bit to to beat that time. I'd like to see Ruggs versus Hill. That would be a nice race. Aaron Rodgers is going to have yeoman's performance, but he's not going to overtake Russell Wilson as your starter. Uh, Raheem Mozart I like a lot, even though he's in a committee situation, and Leonard Fournette. I like the solidness of the bench and the speculation on the bench here. I like the team up and down. There's some question marks at tight end, but I think, you know, that would be an up and down situation here. So you got to have the right team management, the right lineup and free agent management. You can do some damage with this team, possibly win it all out of the playoffs here. But I'm going to give this team an A-. minus. Get it, girl. Yes, very nice. <laughs> so, very excited. Pencil Tucky Sam Bells. This is this is uh, one of my buddies. It's a big old New York Jets fan. What do you think about his team, Mike? Wow, I'm looking at Carson Wentz, and again, can he stay healthy? This is a guy who doesn't finish years very well, and you back that up with Sam Darnold, who has question marks all over the field. So that's courageous picks at quarterback. I'll just leave it at that. Saquon Barkley is a no-brainer, though. He's a top three running back. Josh Jacobs, top ten running back. Tyree Kill, top three wide receiver. Amari Cooper, some question marks on health and the targets around him. Can they continue to make him a number one receiver? They paid him like one. Let's see if he performs like one. Hunter Henry's got to develop that relationship with Tyrod Taylor. I'm sure he'll do that, but there's going to be some growing pains there in uh, Los Angeles with the Chargers and those relationships with the receivers because remember we had shortened preseason we didn't have any preseason games Cooper Cup I would put Cooper Cup in the lineup ahead of Amari Cooper that's for sure Le'Veon Bell I think he's going to have a great year so I like where you have him T.Y. Hilton question marks with Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell around him new relationship with a new quarterback in Phillip Rivers but a lot of the big talking heads picking Indianapolis to go to the Super Bowl We'll talk about that in another time. But, I, again, I'm, I'm questioning the Sam Darnold pick. A.J. Green, I, that's a questionable pick, and as well as Den, uh, you know, Denzel Mims. So I get it, you're a Jets fan, but those Jets may have to go. You got to, you know, when, when when you're playing fantasy football, you got to put the homerism aside. It, you know, some people like that, and I find it difficult as well at times with my favorite players from my favorite teams. But, Again, you know, you put that aside. You want to win or you want to have the guy from your favorite team on your roster? you got to ask yourself that question before you pick anybody. So with a little adjustment here, with a little work, this team can be great. Right now they're at a B-. minus. That coming from Mike Sofka giving a B- minus to the pencil tucky, Sam Bells. I am going to equal that out, and that's exactly where I was going and what I was thinking. I'm giving a B- minus as well to this team. I talked about it before. Uh, you know you have your you have your favorite team, but you gotta 
you got to look at who you're picking up. I brought, you know, when Leonard Fournette was still a Jaguar, I drafted him on one of my teams. And then in this league, after I found out he was a buck, I drafted him again because I think, you know, and I kept him on the other team because I think he's going to have double-digit touchdowns this season, maybe maybe 13. I think he's going to catch out of the backfield. I think he's going to run it in as well. Tom Brady is his quarterback. I don't appreciate what he said about his Jacksonville quarterback situation, but I do think he's going to be in a good situation in Tampa. I but But outside of that, you didn't see me draft really anybody else. DJ Chark was a guy that I looked at, but... I wasn't going uh, to uh, draft homers. I just I can't do it. So because I know it, and I want to win in these leagues. You know my trophies, my bookends. I got to have a few more bookends. I gotta gotta start building some more shelves here. So you know I would say I like the Saquon pick. Obviously he was the second pick after me. Uh, I like Josh Jacobs. I like Tyree Kill. I like the Amari Cooper. I'm a big fan of Cortland Sutton. Having covered him in college, I know he's got great hands and good ability. I'm gonna give this team a B minus as well. Saving Matt Ryan. This is a this is an Atlanta Falcon fan based team. What do you have for this one? Well, they're strong at quarterback. You got Lamar Jackson, you got Kyler Murray, and I, I'm going to say something that not many people would say. But looking at this team's lineup, I think you need to trade Lamar Jackson for one of the top running backs. Somebody out there will make that play for you. You have Kyler Murray on the bench who's going to have an MVP year. you got to roll the dice and take some chances. You could try to trade Kyler Murray, but he's not going to have the same wow factor to another owner you're trying to trade with. So don't undersell. Go after one of the top running backs. Not one of the top five running backs, mind you, but one of the top ten running backs. I could see trading for a Josh Jacobs maybe or or maybe a James Conner with Lamar Jackson because I, I, I know Lamar Jackson is great. He's going to have a great year, but you got to make some decisions somewhere on your roster at a certain point. Do I want to leave all those points on the bench? And I know we've talked about it. If they're on my bench, they're not on your team. You can't beat me with that. But this team needs some help at running back. Aaron Jones is speculative. So is Todd Gurley. And I know I've said you got to make speculative picks. I just don't think those guys have the upside that a lot of other running backs would have. Uh, Julio Jones, great addition on your wide receivers. Tyler Lockett, somewhat of a question mark. He is the lead man in Seattle. He's going to put up yeoman numbers. Mark Andrews at tight end and Hayden Hurst. You're solid at tight end again. No, no fear if Mark Andrews goes down or during his bye week. Hayden Hurst is going to be one of the top five to ten White uh, tight ends in the league, so I think you're doing well there. Uh, Darius Slayton, Debo Samuel on the bench. I like the upside. Hollywood Brown, we got to figure out a way to get him in the lineup. I might put him in the lineup above a Tyler Lockett. With the right moves, this team can win it all. I want to repeat that. With the right moves, this team can win it all. I'm going to give this team an A- minus with a little bit of work to do. Yeah, if this is Joe Forgione's team, uh, somebody that worked with me on uh, MU courtside, uh, near and dear to my heart at Marywood University, and the person right before, Brendan Murphy, had worked on it ever since and involved me back in it, so I want to thank them so much for that and being a part of my uh, of uh, some great history in my life. I like this. You know, he went he went high on Lamar Jackson and went and got Kyler Murray really quick, and so, you know, he, he wanted to make sure that he took care of that at the running back position. Uh, Aaron Jones, I think, will be ousted. Todd Gurley is a question mark. And, you know, then Kevin Coleman and looking at some of these guys. So I agree with you, Mike, that, you know, there's got to be some more work done here with running back. But I like the quarterback situation. I like both of these guys and how dynamic they can be. I also like the fact that I think Hayden Hurst can help him out. He got him from Atlanta. Know that there could be, you know, an opportunity there. He's going to have to prove it to me. He's got, he did what the Baltimore Ravens did a couple of years ago. He drafted Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews just to back himself up. And so I find that to be interesting. I'm going to give it, uh, you know, I'm looking at, I'm not sold on Tyler Lockett. Julio Jones obviously drafted him in connection with the Falcons, but also because he's good. This is one of those teams where you draft Falcons players because you should, even if you weren't a Falcons fan. Todd Gurley, Julio Jones, and also getting Hayden Hurst, and a former player in Tevin Coleman, who is going to be in a running back by committee. I will uh, agree with you, Mike. I'll give this an A- minus as well for saving Matt Ryan. We're going to give this one an A- minus uh, for Joe Forgione. Dallas Roscoe, what do you have for this one? And he is not a Cowboy yeah. fan. He lives in Dallas, Pennsylvania. That's the difference. <laughs> yeah, Matt Stafford's going to be a, a, a solid quarterback. I think he's going to – he has more upside than people realize. I think he's going to do well this year. Zeke Elliott, one of the top three running backs. Miles Sanders, one of the top ten running backs. 
Kelly, uh, Kenny Galladay, I think, is going to have an outstanding season. This is his first year, really, to be an unproven number one. I think he's going to shock some people. He's a little dinged up at the moment. Hopefully, he'll get healthy. DJ Moore, he and DJ Chark a few years ago, tops on the adjusted explosive index I put out every year. So, that's a solid wide receiver. Tyler Higby, you got to look out for a shared relationship with Gerald Everett. So I may look on the waiver wire, see if there's something else out there, because I'm not I'm not really feeling the Higby thing. Yeah, he's the number one tight end there, but you know they have a lot of mouths to feed and, and for the, on the Rams team. And you know when you have a mouth to feed at your same position, that's alarming, especially in small leagues. You want to have top five guys. You don't want to have top ten guys if you can help it. Uh, Allen Robinson again question marks at quarterback in Chicago, but he seems to be the number one target. So you're not doing bad there. AJ Brown ton of upside. I like this guy. Jonathan Taylor on the bench. He could be the number one guy there, so that's a great pick there. Cam Akers, again, he could be the number one guy, but you got to be more patient with him. It's not going to happen. I wouldn't drop him at any point in the season because you never know when it's going to happen. You know, Kareem Hunt, that's a solid guy. This is a PPR league. That's what you want. Terry McLaurin. I think this guy drafted real effectively. Question marks on David Montgomery with a lower extremity injury. Those things tend to linger. So look out for Tariq Cohen. Look out for Ryan Nall, again, on the free agent market. Uh, with a little bit of work, this team could do some damage in the playoffs. I'll give this team a B-. minus. Yeah, you know, looking at looking at this team and looking what at obviously what they have, you know, I like I like the Zeke pick, I like the Miles Sanders pick at Kenny Galladay, DJ Moore. You know, looking up and down this, there's only one quarterback on the team and it's Matt Stafford. So I'm gonna have to agree with you, Mike, based on the talent, I would not give this team a C. I just think the quarterback situation is a big issue here. But he leaned on the side of the running backs, Jonathan Taylor, Cam Akers, Kareem Hunt, and uh, Miles Sanders, Zeke Elliott. I think this team's Got a lot of good stuff. I think that they could move up to the A world. I think they could live in the B-plus world. But for right now, I'm going to give Dallas Roscoe and Ross Turetsky a B-minus with you. The Chiefs' kingdom. What do you have for this one? Yeah, Patrick Mahomes, stellar last night in his performance. Total command of the offense. It's amazing. You know, they can just see anybody, any given day. Watch Nicole Hartman was solid last week. Watch him be the, the focal point of the offense next week. And that's the dangerous thing here. you got weapons all the way around. And Patrick Mahomes, the highly paid guy, highest paid guy, and deservedly so. He's, he's the best quarterback in the league right now. I think Patrick Mahomes is worthy of a pick. Uh, Austin Eckler are going to have a solid year. David Johnson going to have a solid year, even though he's got a spotty offensive line. I thought he performed well last night with those challenges. Juju Smith-Schuster, can he be the true number one? I have questions about that. Well, Sammy Watkins, he always gets out of the gate. The first game, you know, and, and, and if you follow me with the Daily Fantasy, I had mentioned this as well. Sammy Watkins always starts out really hot, so that's a nice veteran receiver you can count on. And Travis Kelsey, the tight end here on this team, that's a strong pick there. Austin Hooper backing him up, that's a great that's a great job. And again, with the George Kittle, Kelsey and Kittle, doing a great thing, playing them both, playing them in the flex. You may consider trading one of those guys because you do have Austin Hooper on the bench. Maybe you trade a, a Kittle and maybe you, you pick up a more solid running back situation. That's something to look at. Jarvis Landry, Sterling Shepard on the bench. Tariq Cohen, I like that a lot with the with the uh, injury situation to David Montgomery. And uh, I think it's a solid team. I think it's a good job drafting. I give it a B plus. So a B plus uh, for this one coming in here. And uh, Mike, Mike giving the team a B plus here looking at the Chiefs kingdom. Uh, I would say, you know, obviously uh, this is uh, this is a uh, Chiefs fan. This is Brandon Smith. Congratulations to Brandon once again on getting a Super Bowl victory with his Chiefs team that is so near and dear to his heart. Uh, big time congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, looking at this team, in my opinion, uh, you know, I, I like Drew Brees and Pat Mahomes on it. Uh, I'm specula- I, 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 I'm not a big fan of the Sterling Shepard uh, pick on here. Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. He got them both as well. Uh, he got Juju. He got Austin Eckler, David Johnson, Juju Smith-Schuster. I'm going to give uh, Brandon in the in the grand scheme of things here uh, some questions with Tariq Cohen and some of these other guys. Mike, I'm going to agree with you, and I'm going to go B plus. Almost went A minus, but the Shepard and the Cohens, some of those make me kind of scratch my head a little bit. But the other side of it, with the Kelseys and the Kittles, uh, Sammy Watkins, obviously when Kansas City has their uh, their game off in Week 10, this would be the team to play. 
But uh, there's a lot of talent here, and being a Chiefs fan is a very, very good fantasy thing right now. So if you are going to be a homer and it's with Kansas City, you know, there's better dividends to that than in some other cases, and I think that he got some good players here. So I'm going to give Brandon a B-plus as well. The Virginia Ballers, and I love it because it's going off of his last name, which is B-A-H-L. What do you think about this one, Mike? Yeah, I saw a meme in relation to fantasy football last week on one of the social network sites, and it said, you have a great team. If this was 2017, that's what I'm seeing on this team here. Look, Josh Allen is an excellent quarterback. He's underrated. He's going to rush the ball. But Dalvin Cook, he's in a contract year. He gets hurt every year. Watch him put up MVP-type numbers. Dalvin Cook is a great guy to have. Should he stay healthy? Devin Singletary's got Zach Moss breathing down his neck. So you got two question marks at running back. And I don't feel you have a top-10 quarterback here. I feel Josh Allen is a solid quarterback. But in the size of this league, you got to be ready to make a move. I would definitely have Deshaun Watson start in front of Josh Allen. Right now I see that you know he, put, he had Deshaun Watson on the bench. I'm looking at Mike Evans here. He's dinged up right now, but... Hey, he's got Tom Brady throwing him the ball. Nothing bad there. Beckham Jr. always seems to perform week in, week out, year after year. He's, he's you know, mind you now, he's got to stop, you know, uh, what are proposing to the punter's net on the sideline and stop the shenanigans. And hopefully with that run first now adoption in Cleveland and set up the play action, he could have a big year and be underrated. Robert Woods, solid guy for your flex there. Zach Ertz. Hurts gets hurts. I see you got Jared Cook there, and you can't go wrong with a tight end in New Orleans. Breeze uses the tight end, especially in the red zone. Edelman's a great find on your bench. Looking at uh, Deshaun Jackson, that's a little bit of a questionable move, in my opinion. At 155 years old, he's still got wheels, and I would never have a backup kicker on my team. I don't care. So I would give this team a C. I'll give this team a solid C. They got some work to do. I don't think it's all lost, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, they got a little bit of work to do. They they could win some games in this league and hurt some people with the right moves. Yeah, you know, I, I think I, I like some of the stuff. You know, I think, I mean, obviously he's a Bills fan, uh, John Ball the second. I uh, got Robert Woods, who's a former Bills player, Bills defense, Devin Singletary, Josh Allen. Looks a lot like uh, John Tuohy's team that's also a Bills fan. And with getting uh, some of these guys, I like the Deshaun Watson pick. Justin Tucker's my favorite kicker in the NFL, but yes, I would not be drafting a second kicker. Uh, Mike Evans, a good pick. Delvin Cook has nothing to do but to, you know, go up from here, hopefully. He got two cooks in the kitchen with Jerry Cook and Delvin Cook on this team. I'm going to give this team a C plus for John Ball. I do think that there's work to do, but you got to look outside of some of these things and outside of maybe the guys that you're cheering for. You can always buy those jerseys. You can always go out and support them. You can always watch those games. But fantasy is a different world. And some of these guys, I, you know, I just I look at it and say, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be leaning on, you know, the Robert Woods to save my team or the even the Odells to save my team or the Deshaun Jacksons, and definitely not have a backup kicker. So I'm going to say C-plus in this respect. Next one up is Team SF. What do you have for this one? Yeah, I like this team a lot. I'm looking at Tom Brady. I don't think you're going to go wrong. He's going to have top ten numbers. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, he, he lived up to it last night. I think this is a great addition to anybody's team. Number one running back, he, he, he's worthy of that. He's worthy. He's going to finish as a top five running back, definitely. Joe Mixon, solid guy. They're going to lean on him solid with uh, the rookie quarterback, Joe Burrow. Man, the wide receivers. Michael Thomas, the top receiver. Chris Godwin, a top ten receiver. A little bit of a flaw in my mind on overdrafted Darren Waller. I think Darren Waller is not going to be what we expect saw from Darren Waller in the past, but I see you got Noah Fant, who could possibly have a bigger year than Darren Waller. Yes, you heard that correct, so watch Darren Waller closely. Keep him as the starter right now, but don't be afraid to pull that plug and put Noah Fant in there. DJ Chark, I like him a lot in your flex. Again, he and DJ Moore were tops of the Adjusted Explosive Index several years back. Melvin Gordon, solid, but you know he's going to split some carries. Mark Ingram, I think he's going to have a better start to the year than people realize, so that's a good bench spot there. Will Fuller, can he stay healthy? He may not down the stretch, so questionable on the on the bench late in the year, but you don't have room for him in your lineup with Thomas and Good and Godwin. So I think that's a great problem to have. You know, I give this team, I give this team an A. I give this team a solid A. I think it's the best team I've seen in this league so far. 
Uh, Mike giving an A to Team SF. Uh, Matt SF's team getting an A. Uh, Tom Brady and Chris Godwin. I like this. Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Mike and I were hoping big things for him, and he definitely had a very nice debut for the five foot seven running back out of LSU. Uh, Michael Thomas. Uh, obviously, I'm a fan of this. Darren Waller. I like it. The DJ Chark pick. Uh, you know, Gardner Minshew. Everybody's got their guy. DJ seems to be his guy, at least for right now. I like the Teddy Bridgewater back up here on the team. I like Noah Fant. Uh, I like Carrion Johnson, but I know he's going to be splitting time. So will Mark Ingram and Melvin Gordon. Because he's got a bunch of backs that will be splitting time, I'm going to give him an A-. minus. But outside of that, I think there's a lot of good on this team. Here's something funny. Lights Camara Action is the name that I had on my team last year. This man made this team name. I had to look twice to ask myself. I thought I just changed that name two days ago. He came up with this name after I came up with this name. Smart minds think alike. I like it, but he asked me how my team did in the other league that was named Lights Camara Action. And I said, well, there's a reason why I changed the name after two years. They were terrible. So so the uh, A and the A- minus to Team SF, the name Lights Camara Action. I love it, Lawrence Tompkins, because smart minds think alike. But I had to get away from the name after the team just – it ne- like the Washington football team, sometimes you – yeah, and obviously for different reasons. This was not for anything that was a bigger whatever. But, you know, sometimes you got to change a team name, change the identity, and start branding differently. That's what I did. What do you think about him branding as the new Lights Camara action? Yeah, I think this is a hot team looking at it from the start. You look at Dak Prescott, he's going to have top five here. Alvin Kamara, top five guy. And, again, in leagues like this, you want to have top five players up and down your draft board, up and down your position list, I should say. Derrick Henry can be a top five running back. I say can because is he going to continue to dominate and repeat what he's done in years past? You just look at this guy and you're like, how can this guy do any more? And then he shocks you again. So hopefully he's going to continue his upward trend. Adam Thielen and Michael Gallup, those are great wide receivers to have. Evan Ingram, this is where you start to fall out of top five and you start to be in top ten range. Still a solid guy. And Nick Chubb in the flex, I like that a lot. I think the Patriots' defense is greatly underrated. They're going to open the year against Miami. They're going to score a lot of points, I think. And I'm looking at the bench here. Matt Ryan on the bench. That's a great. Calvin Ridley, you may have a, a situation with an abundance here in wide receiver because you got Stephon Diggs on the bench as well. You may consider trading one of your receivers, maybe getting an uptick somewhere else, maybe a tight end. Uh, we'll talk about that some other time, though. That owner can send me a note, and I'll be happy to look at that for them. Uh, looking at Stephon Diggs, though, that's a great guy to have. J.K. Dobbins on the bench as a solid guy with a lot of upside late in the year. Daniel Jones, I know there's some question marks out there, but I think he's going to have a better year than people expect. Chris Herndon, I'm hot and cold on, and I like the speculative pick in Jerry Judy. I'll give this team a B. Uh, Mike, Mike giving this team a B, uh, lights, Camara action, getting a B overall on this uh, for Dak Prescott. I mean, I, I like, I mean, having three quarterbacks, eh, I, I wouldn't do it, but I like the fact of what he got his backups. I, you know, the wide receiver, Stephon Diggs, Calvin Ridley, Adam Thielen, Michael Gallup, Evan Ingram is arguably the best receiver. In my opinion, he is the receiver of the New York Giants, so that's another receiver, even though he's a tight end. Camara and Derrick Henry, I like that too. I'm going to give this team an A. Overall, I thought about giving them an A+, plus, but I'm going to go with an A on this as far as Lights, Camara, Action go. So B and an A. Mike and I will take a step aside for a fast break inside of this special edition of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. A, you know, the, the show that where we're grading all of the fantasy owners all across the Wake Up Call Fantasy Leagues. We did the three leagues in Central New York, the Marywood Alumni League. The next one up is the league that Mike and I are in together, and that is the Wake Up Call Floridian League. And that Florida League just had its 10-year, this being its decade, 10-year anniversary. We will be talking about them right after this, where sports meets life on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. So stay tuned with us here on Facebook.com backslash live now, DT. And thank you so much for listening in as well on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT here where sports truly meets meets life. We thank you so much for being a part of the show with everything that we're doing here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. It's 
what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or iced milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carbolite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, carvalanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carbolite ice cream. Carb all the way. It's what happy tastes like. Cafe Cabal offers same-day local delivery of our products, offering no delivery charge for Onondaga County. Shop CafeCabal.com for fresh roasted coffee beans, cold brew, travel mugs, and all your essential Cafe Cabal needs. Cafe Cabal, coffee for the soul. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash DT as well as on Facebook Live, on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT, inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. You see it right there. For home delivery, mobile cafe, as well as neighborhood cafes, make sure you go to CafeKubal.com, get all their information on how they can bring their cafe experience to you, as well as how you can locally deliver from, er, get a delivery from them. And if you're in Onondaga County, the delivery is free, as well as go to any of their five locations at the Galisano Children's Hospital, as well as 324 West Water Street for the Creek Walk Commons, the Salina Cafe on 401 South Salina Street, as well as 3501 James Street for the Eastwood Cafe, and the new Holly Green Cafe on 208 North Townsend Street for Cafe Kubal Coffee for the Soul. With that being said, Mike and I are finishing up today's show after the annoying moment of the week. Lead, with as well as the top dog of the week being announced, we are now giving our draft grades for every single fantasy owner of all of the leagues, all the three Central New York leagues on top of Central New York, the Floridian League and the Marywood Alumni League. Florida, we saved this one, the longest standing one for last year, 10 years of being together. And so uh, we will take a look at uh, what this what this uh, league has to offer here as we get set to uh, finish off our grades for everything here we're going to start with name change in progress and i'm going to hand it off to mike we'll be grading these uh, mike will not be grading himself i'll be grading him and as always in the leagues he'll be grading me i will not be grading myself so mike name change in progress what do you have about this one yeah this is the owner who's won this league before and you know you can't go wrong with a third pick in the draft you get his ego elliot then you come back and get travis kelsey that's pretty strong i like the addition of james connor cooper cup Keenan Allen, again, underrated, I think, undervalued, but he's got work to do. He's got to develop that relationship with Tyrod Taylor. James White, PPR league, so it's a great pick there because he's going to catch the ball. He's going to get seven or eight catches out of the backfield. C.D. Lamb, I like the upside and the speculation on the pick. Maybe a bit early there. Uh, Marlon Mack, you know, everybody thinks that Jonathan Taylor is going to walk in and take that job, and he might, but Marlon Mack's still going to get some touches. Same thing with Chase Edmonds. 
Something happens to Kenyon Drake. That's a fine speculative pick. Joshua Kelly, another speculative pick. We talked about that one previous in the show here. So I like him. He's got the new Austin Eckler role. Joshua Kelly does. He's probably on your free agent waiver wire somewhere. Dallas Goddard, the backup tight end on this team. I like that a lot. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, again, a lot of upside. Another rookie. A lot of rookies on this team in the receiving core. And that's not a bad thing. You know, Randy Moss broke that mold several years back. It used to take three years for a receiver to hit their peak. Now some of these guys are hitting the ground running. So if you do like this owner did and you draft four or five of them, one or two of them hit, you're ahead of the game. Because a lot of people don't see that. Uh, looking at Jalen Rager, he's a little bit dinged up. Another rookie. Uh, looking at the two defenses they have, the Rams and the Broncos, both solid performers. Jake Elliott, you know, kickers are kickers. It is what it is. I'm going to give this team a solid B. I think it's a good effort. Yeah, you know, uh, looking at this team uh, top to bottom and, and Mike giving them a B, uh, I like the Russell Wilson, Zeke Elliott, James Conner. A lot of good stuff here. Travis Kelsey has some depth here on the team. I like C.D. Lamb. Uh, this has been the year of the rookie running back, and there's also a bunch of rookie wide receivers to go out and get. Josh Kelly and Chase Edmonds are big rolls of the dice. So is Dallas Goddard. So uh, Dallas Goddard and Brandon Ayuk. So and Jalen Rieger. So because there's a lot of rolling of the dice here, it could be big upside. Could end up being an A or an A minus. This wonderful lady, Lisa Hughes, advised for the championship. I think the last three years she's been in the championship, and if she's not winning it. She's in it, and so that says something about her ability to get to the final game and either win that game or at least get there. She is a perennial star when it comes to making it to our championship, so I am going to give her a B for this, but I believe that there is the opportunity for this to turn into. I'm going to give it a B plus. I think there's an opportunity with the upside that this could become a... You know, a team that could end up being an A, if not an A+. And when it comes to Lisa, I don't deny at all her ability to get there. So I was going to say a B, but I'm going to say B+. And I know that uh, she is incredibly smart when it comes to this, and there's going to be some good to happen here from Lisa. So shout out to her. Next one up is the Lando Lagoon and Joe Lando the Thirds team. What do you think about this one? Yeah, I like Miles Sanders and Joe Mixon, the running backs on this team. I think they're both going to have a lot of touches, a lot of targets. I like that. Allen Robinson, that's a speculative pick in my opinion. That's a bit high to take Allen Robinson at 35, the third round. But, you know, he's trying to fill his receivers. I get it at that point in the draft. I'm surprised he was able to come back and get Ridley after Robinson. I think Ridley is going to have the better year. Robinson, there's question marks at quarterback in Chicago. They're saying Trubisky is, is going to rise above the challenge. Challenge and bringing in Foles has made him a better quarterback. We're going to see Kareem Hunt. I like that. You put him in the flex right away. Antonio Gibson, a lot of upside, but be patient there because I don't know if he's going to come out of the box as quick as everyone thinks. I know he's a beast. I know he scored one out of every three times he touched the ball at Memphis. But this is a guy who's very raw and has a lot of talent, but he's very raw. They're going to put him in good situations. It's going to take a time for him to flourish. Evan Ingram, I think that's a solid top 10 uh, tight end. But again, in these leagues, your target is top five at every position. Otherwise, you know, you got work to do. Sterling Shepard, he could perform. He could not perform as a question mark there. You know, Darius Slayton, is he going to take over? Golden Tate, can he be the number one guy there in New York for the Giants? They have some weapons, but they're all mediocre weapons, and I think Sterling Shepard leads that pack of mediocrity. Christian Kirk could be a star, but he's got players around him. You know, he's got Larry Fitzgerald, the guy's 150 years old, still getting it done. Deshaun Hopkins is there. Kenyon Drake's got to get his share. I like Robbie Anderson. I think that's going to be a surprise pick. That's a great pick by this team at this point in the draft in round 10. Look at him, Mike. I think he took the Bills defense kind of high in round 11. I'm always a proponent. You draft your kicker last, and you draft your defense just before that. Um, but looking at Mike Williams, there's question marks. He's injury prone, and he's dinged up right now. Damian Harris, he could take over from James White, but I doubt that's going to happen. I think James White's continue to perform strong. I think Damian Harris is going to get his touches, though. Not a bad speculative pick. Paris Campbell, we talked about him on another team earlier, could challenge T.Y. Hilton in the amount of targets that he gets, so that's something to look out for. Raquel Armstead, this is a guy I might drop at this point simply because of the James Robinson situation, but they put a Zigbo on IR now, so you know, you got to watch. You know, do I want to drop him? And then three weeks later, he comes back, and all of a sudden, he's the starter. 
you may be able to afford to make that move depending on what's on the waiver wire. There's probably some guys that'll do you better good than a guy who's on IR for for three weeks. And these ESPN rules, not all the time will they allow you to put a COVID guy on IR. So it depends on your platform. In this league, I'm not sure if that's the case. I'm looking at the kicker and a team quarterback taking last in in, uh, the Titans. I think that's a great pick there. I think this is a solid team. I like the Bears defense better than... uh, you know, better than a lot of other defenses. I think they're gonna they're gonna surprise some people. But I think Terrian, uh, what do they got? They got two quarterbacks or three quarterbacks. Looks like they got two quarterbacks. I may even drop. I may even drop one of the quarterbacks. I mean, in a league like this, you can afford to take chances like that. This team will have to take a couple chances. There's a little bit of work to do on this team. I'll give it a B minus. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know looking at this team and and some of the pieces that are here. Uh, really, the bench is where my concern is going to come in. So I was going to give it a B, but I will agree with you, Mike, and give it a B minus. A wicked Lester. What do you have for this one? I like Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, the first pick in the draft. This is a guy who's solid. He's going to do a lot of damage. This is, a, and you back that up with George Kittle coming right back. Yeah, I think it's kind of high to draft that George Kittle. I think he's overdrafted, but he usually doesn't disappoint. So he's going to put up solid top three numbers. Uh, Kenny Galladay, I think he's going to have an outstanding year, but is he worthy of being the number one? He's going to draw the number one corner every week. Tyler Lockett, number one guy in Seattle right now, but that's not saying a lot. They spread the ball around a lot. Tyler Mark, Tyler Lockett, not DK Metcalf. He doesn't explode off the screen anymore. David Johnson had a fine game last night, but he's got that spotty offensive line. I'm wondering, can he do that every week? A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, I don't know if this guy's a Cincinnati fan or not, but I like Tyler Boyd a lot more. A.J. Green could have taken could have been taken past the seventh round. Ronald Jones, same thing. There's some upside there, but he's got Fournette in the way and a lot of pass targets going to those big-name receivers and tight end. Madison's a speculative pick. Breida's a, a committee guy. Curtis Samuel not having a good preseason, not having a good camp. Watch this guy explode now and have one of the better seasons out there. Tony Pollard's a speculative play. I like that because while he's backing up Zeke, maybe you could trade the Zeke owner. You know, maybe you can make something happen. Some guys value the handcuffs. Some guys don't. You'll never know until you try. You miss 100% of the chances you don't take. So if I was this owner, I would try to play for some trades here. Looking up and down, I think they got a decent roster. I'm going to give this roster a B minus, a little bit of work to do, but they could do damage. They did real well in the top half of the draft. Yeah, you know, I think uh, you know with with Wicked Lester, uh, Eric Cooper's, uh, and what did you give him, Mike again? A B minus. Yes, sir. Okay, so B minus here uh, coming from Mike. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, obviously, uh, they had the first pick here. Uh, David Johnson, Kenny Galladay. Uh, David Johnson, you know, and the jury's kind of out for me on this. Uh, Tyler Lockett as well. Uh, the quarterback situation with Cincinnati and uh, Philadelphia, you know, you got a rookie quarterback and then you got a guy who you're wondering about staying healthy who could be taken over by another rookie quarterback. Uh, Tony Pollard is a sneaky one. I like that. Randall Cobb could pay off dividends potentially. But I am going to, uh, I'm, you know, with A.J. Green and whatnot, I was going to give it a B, but because there are issues with injury and because uh, some of these guys I just don't think are going to be consistent uh, due to some of that, and overall I'm going to give it a B- minus as well, and I will, uh, I will agree with you on that, Mike. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go B- minus for this, uh, for Wicked Lester. What do you have for the, well, I, I will be doing the Orlando Fat Gators because that's Mike's team, so let's go to the SCW and then we'll go back to the Gators. What do you have for SCW? Uh, hang on a second, I'm pulling him. Here we go, SCW. I like Nick Chubb a lot. You know, obviously he pops off the screen. Number one pick, I'm not sure of that, though. He may, may have gone somewhere else. I think Nick Chubb's a second-round guy. Taking him at 12 is not bad. Coming back and getting Eckler, you've secured your running back situation at least at 12 and 13 on the way back. So I like that. I like Eckler. Odell Beckham, you know, hopefully he'll be in a situation where they do more run in that offense, so they'll have room for play action, which will open up Odell Beckham. Cortland Sutton's dinged up now with a with an AC joint. He could be out a couple weeks, so watch out there. I'm looking at the wide receivers on the bench, and these are all speculative type guys. Will Fuller is probably a guy to put in instead of Cortland Sutton right now. And the other speculative plays are Darius, Darius Slayton and Deshaun Jackson. 
you know, I, I'm not sure I like either one of those guys, quite frankly. Uh, and looking at the quarterback situation, when we do team quarterback, I think you can get away with one quarterback. Because your guy goes down, you might get the backup, and then you could look on the waiver wire. There's 10 teams. Theoretically, there's maybe 15, 18 other quarterbacks that are still out there. So I would take those picks and put them in another uh, skilled position, such as running back or wide receiver. In this team's case, I would look to pick up another wide receiver. I'm looking at the Sean Jackson, a little long in the tooth. Justin Jackson, I think he's going to get squoze out with Joshua Kelly and Austin Ackler. You may end up dropping Justin Jackson. Same thing with Jarek McKinnon. You know, he's had a heck of a camp, and he could show that he's worthy of being the number one guy. He's mired behind Raheem Mozart, who I think is going to get a lion's share of that committee. And, of course, Tevin Coleman as well. Looking at Benny Snell, nice speculative picks. I like the speculation this owner took in the draft, but there's a little bit of work to do here to get this team to the next level, get this team to the playoffs. I'm going to give this team a B-. minus. Yeah, you know, looking at looking at what they have on the roster, I like Aaron Rodgers, Nick Chubb. Uh, Austin Eckler, like I said, I'm not a- as sold as some others, but you know I do think that there's talent there. And, you know, my big questions come from Deshaun Jackson, Justin Jackson, Jarek McKinnon, you know, as well as a uh, Golden Tate, and then Will Fuller the fifth. A lot, you know, very talented, but does he stay healthy? You got Odell and Jarvis Landry from you know the the same team in Cleveland. So I'm going to go C plus on this one, and we'll see you know where we can uh, where we could go from here. I do think that this team has some upside and opportunity. I think they could be better, obviously, and I think they will be better than a C plus team. But that's what I'm going to give them coming from here. I have the great honor for the first time the entire show to be able to give a pick that Mike cannot uh, give, that Mike is not going to be grading at all because. I can now do Mike's team, the Orlando Fat Gators. So I will be doing that in this moment. Uh, Kyler Murray, obviously I'm a fan of him, a top four, top five quarterback out there. Uh, Raheem Mostert, Mike is higher on him than I am, but I think that there's talent. Uh, Mark Ingram is going to be in a committee, and so is Raheem. That's where I get a little bit concerned, but I do think that the opportunities are going to be there uh, for Mark Ingram. And, uh, you know, for Raheem, potentially, I think Mark's got a good opportunity, though, because they run the ball so much and they're scheming is to run the ball, and once they get you on the run over and over again to you know to, to send those passes down the field to guys like Hollywood and, and uh, Miles Boykin and so on and so forth. Devontae Adams, I like the pick, and Michael Thomas, arguably number one and number two right there, uh, drafted very smart on Mike's side. Uh, Mark Andrews, my favorite tight end of this year's draft, arguably. Uh, he's my number three behind Kelsey and Kittle, respectively, but I'm uh, big on drafting him this year. Uh, Jerry Judy, I think he's another guy that's going to step up and do some good things. Boston Scott, I'm interested in what he's going to do and what this is going to look like in Philadelphia with Miles Sanders. And uh, I am, you know, outside of that, I am a uh, fan of Henry Ruggs III. He's been a steal later on in the drafts. Mike got him later on here too. Bryce Love, we'll see what he could do in Washington. He came into the league injured. Just, I mean, Darius Geis as well. Darius isn't there anymore. So that'll be something to look at. He took Tevin Coleman as a handcuff to Raheem Mostert. That could uh, you know, that could help out in the long run, or it could kind of hinder, and you might want to look at putting somebody else in that spot. Uh, Darrington Evans, I think, is a little bit of a reach here behind Derrick Henry, but I do believe that he's going to get some opportunities, and it's Tennessee. And so knowing that uh, some of those guys are going to be on highlight reels that you may not expect is you know something that could definitely happen. Uh, Devin Asiasi took a little bit of a reach here, but they're – is the opportunity for high dividends in the tight end being worked into the system with the Patriots under Bill Belichick. Uh, Van Jefferson is another guy to roll the dice on here. And I, I like J.K. You know, J.K. Dobbins. I'm a fan of that. So ultimately, if I just looked at Kyler Murray, Raheem Mostert, Mark Ingram, Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams, Mark Andrews, Jerry Judy, if I just looked at that element and that piece of, of Mike Sofka's team, I'd feel really good about it. So, you know, Mike, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an A- minus here. I think the team's somewhere between an A and a B, but I do think that if some of these things come through, there's there's tremendous upside, and eventually I think you'll 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 move a couple of these guys, uh, maybe a running back or two off of the list and, and into free agency as you look for somebody else. But I'm going to give you an A minus. Yeah, no risk it, no biscuit. You got to do what you got to do. That's why you, that's why they play the game. That's why you draft. You know, you never know. 
So, yeah, you take guys with upside, especially late in the draft, and you, you can't be afraid to take chances. Otherwise, you're not going to win. Absolutely. So, and, you know, and like you said, you know, if you take those chances and chances that other people either are not going to do the research to know to take or that they're not going to take out of fear or concern. So, uh, good stuff there, and I like it. I This is one of my favorite names of all of the leagues that we have in the wake-up call, Fantasy Football Leagues this year. Feeling like a million bucks, and bucks not as money, but bucks as the... Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What do you think about this team, Mike? Yeah, I like the team name as well. That's, that's awful clever. I like that. I like Derrick Henry. Hopefully he's still a top 10 running back. I don't see why he wouldn't be. Every time I doubt this guy, he proves me wrong, and he goes out, and next thing I know, he's running for a 70-yard touchdown against the Jaguars again, again, again. I think they're showing the same highlight, but it's no. It's Derrick Henry. So when they play again, watch him. He's going to rip off a 60 or 70-yard run again. DeAndre Hopkins, is he going to continue to be a dominant wide receiver? There's some time that it takes to build that rapport with your quarterback. Kyler Murray's going to have an MVP season. Hopefully, DeAndre Hopkins can have a top five, because that's what you want in these leagues, a top five performance. Right now, I got him slotted as a top ten performer. Adam Thielen knows, great, great pick. Robert Woods, I like that pick there. That's a lot of value, I think. Although he was overdrafted in his average draft position. He was going in average draft position of somewhere between six and eight, and we took him at four. That might not be to your advantage. Coming back, you get Le'Veon Bell. I think he's going to surprise people. You know, David Montgomery, when we did this draft, David Montgomery was injured, lower extremity, so he gets downgraded. I don't know how you can take a guy with a lower extremity injury that early in the sixth round. Same thing with a Debo Samuel. That's a bit early in the seventh round for this cat with a foot injury coming off that trying to get back on the field because they need help at receiver in San Fran. Preston Williams. Somebody's got to be the guy. He might be the guy in Miami. Jamison Crowder I'm not excited about because I'm not excited about too many Jet players outside of Le'Veon Bell. And Keel Harry, there's some upside there. TJ Hawkinson, he needs to have a career year here. He needs to step up. So that's a nice speculative pick at tight end there. Chris Herndon, I'm not excited about that. LaShawn McCoy, I'm not excited about that. Blake Jarwin, I'm excited about that. You know, you got three tight ends here. I think you need to drop Chris Herndon. I think you need to make some moves. I think you got a little bit of work to do, but the overall core of this team has some promise. But you got some work to do, my friend. I'm gonna give him a C plus. Uh, Mike gave him a C plus, and, and and I knew, and and I, I, I mean, it's like you, you know when you know. And Rick comes up with some of the best names out there. Uh, blame it on the Henny, King of the Tannehill. He's a Miami fan, so normally he has a Miami name. But feeling like a million bucks, and what I find to be interesting is he only has one buck, and that's Ryan Suckup, the Tampa Bay kicker, who they got who used to be with the Titans, and they ousted Matt Gay. That was a name that really wasn't known out there uh, you know, around the country, and now Ryan Suckup is the kicker, and obviously he has Adam Thielen. You know, the running back situation on this team I have in question here, and oh, he also has LaShawn McCoy, pardon me. So that would put me in a, in a certain place. But, you know, and, and I just think overall, I mean, the, the best picks are – I'm a fan of the Derrick Henry pick. Obviously, DeAndre Hopkins, Adam Thielen. TJ Hawkinson could be a sleeper this year. I don't think uh, a lot of people are expecting a ton out of him. But ultimately, you know, Mike, uh, when I look up and down this roster, I'm going to give it, you're going to give it a C plus. I'm going to give it a B minus for Thielen, like a million bucks for Ricardo Etienne. So uh, thank you to Rick for putting his team in here. We'll go to the next one, and that is the Neon Icons. What do you have for this, Mike? Yeah, this is, a, this is a team that looks pretty solid up and down, but as I dive into it here, Josh Jacobs should be a top 10 running back. You know, drafted him at 10, so that's appropriate. Came in, Coming back from the turn at 15, you pick up Julio Jones at the top four or five uh, wide receiver. Coming back again, DJ Moore. I think he's underdrafted. I think he's going to surprise some people again. And then two rounds later, he comes back with DJ Chark, who's, you know, DJ Moore, DJ Chark topped my adjusted explosive index several years back. So these are guys that are going to continue to be solid plays. Along with Terry McLaurin, he's a threat to take one to the house at any moment. Devin Singletary is going to have Zach Moss breathing down his neck. So what does this owner do? They take Zach Moss two picks later. I think that's a great play. I think that's smart play because they may go with the hot hand. Hopefully it's not a mixture, and hopefully it's not a 50-50 share. Hopefully you'll play Devin Singletary early, and then, then Zach Moss takes over. You'll flip those two guys, and you'll still have a handcuff in place. Hayden Hurst, I like that guy. I like Hayden Hurst a lot. I think that's the, the, the pick of the team. 
the best pick this team made. I mean, in the tenth round to get Hayden Hurst, I think he's under drafted everywhere else. And if I'm not mistaken, I was ready to take Hayden Hurst, and this guy took him just before me in that draft. I'm looking at the Lions quarterback. I think he's going to have a yeoman's effort. He can have a lot of upside this year. Chris Thompson, he may be mired in the muck, but early on, he may be the, the winner of the share because they got James Robinson, who's a cat out of Illinois State who nobody knows. It probably wasn't even speculative to make the team. And then they had all the changes at running back there. You had Fournette's jettison. You had uh, uh, Reichel Armstead on IR with COVID. You got uh, 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 Ozigbo, who was supposed to take a lion's share of those pl- those running back plays from uh, Nebraska. This, these are guys that have the pedigree, just they don't have the name. So we're going to see. This owner went and took a Zigbo, but now he's on the IR. So depending on the IR rules in this league, he may put him on IR. He may just cut him because it is a committee situation when all those guys get back as well. Alan Lazard, I like the speculative pick there. A lot of upside. Michael Pittman, a lot of upside there. Jalen Richard, eh, I'm not, not too excited about that pick there. Uh, Blankenship in the Steelers, D. You know, uh, yeah, you know, if come maybe, they're, they're great. I'm going to give his owner a B-plus. I think he did a solid job, especially backing themselves up in the top half of the draft. Yeah, Mike, I'm going to agree with you here for Trey Sofka's team, the Neon Icons. I'm going to go with a B-plus as well. I like I like some of the picks and other ones. You kind of make me scratch my head a little bit. I like the DJ Moore, Julio Jones, Josh Jacobs. I'm not a big fan of the quarterback situation on this team. Uh, not a big fan. I mean, obviously drafting a lot of Jacksonville running backs late, and, uh, and and James Robinson right now, arguably the starter, and he is not on this team. Uh, DJ Chark, I do like uh, that pick, and I like the Hayden Hurst pick. The Terry McLaurin pick could pay off dividends, but I think the biggest one is the Zach Moss thing, and I think with Devin Singletary being his second year, Zach Moss being in his first year, there's an opportunity for both of these guys to make a splash in Buffalo. And after having LaShawn McCoy at 152 years old, you now have two guys that together don't even add up to 50 years old. So good stuff coming from that. And I think a nice handcuff and somebody who got the handcuff where in all the other leagues that didn't happen. So I'm going to give them a B plus. The TSR Gigaxians. What do you have for this one? Yeah, Clyde edwards Solaire. I like that guy a lot. He took him at seven. You know, he... Generally speaking, if you wanted him, you had to take him in the top six. He had an average draft position of eight. So that was a smart pick. And then you come back and you get the Chiefs quarterback. I mean, that's, those, I mean, that is a one-two punch. I mean, that's a sucker punch to whoever plays this team week in, week out. But, you know, you look at that and you go, oh, really? I got to face this guy? Amari Cooper is questionable right now. He's dinged up a little bit. And he has a lot of names around him. So I'd be concerned about his volume of targets to start. Texans QB, I think that's a little bit of a, of a question mark. You know, you got Kyler Murray, you only start one QB, and especially with Team QB, you may turn around and trade Deshaun Watson somewhere and pick up a one-week option, which you already did that. You got three team quarterbacks. You got the Rams quarterback at the bottom half. You know, you may end up even cutting golf, believe it or not, running with one QB and trading the other one. Get some value somewhere else. You're going to need more value at the running back and wide receiver position at the bottom half of this team from what I'm looking at. Melvin Gordon, I'm kind of concerned about the timeshare with Lindsey and running in that higher altitude. Tariq Cohen, not used to getting a lion's share of the carries. He may get that with uh, with David Montgomery with the lower extremity injury. Devontae Parker's going to be the man in Miami, but I'm concerned with the quarterback situation. Jared Cook, hey, they're going to look for the tight end. That's what Breeze does, especially in the red zone. That's a fine pick there. And I don't mind backing that up with Noah Fant because Jared Cook's like 180 years old, so in case something happens, you're fine. I think Noah Fant's going to have a great year. Steelers D, it's a bit early for me to take a defense and a kicker in 11 and 12. Uh, again, you went with the third quarterback, then you went with another defense at 14 and another kicker. So I think you've got some work to do here. I, you know, again, I'm, this goes against the grain to what a lot of people do, but you got to ask yourself, do you want to play or do you want to win? You want to be an also ran? You want to be a wallflower? You're going to get out there and dance. Here's what you got to do. You got to drop some of these guys. You got three quarterbacks. You got two tight ends. You got two kickers. You got some work to do, my friend. The good news is the top half of the team looks well, and you going there's no, nowhere but up that you can go with a few adjustments. I'm going to give this team a C plus. Yeah, Mike. I was looking at the same thing too. I like Clyde. I like Clyde edwards hilaire and obviously Pat Mahomes. I'm a fan of that. I like the Noah Fant pick, but a lot. You know, when I look at the rest of this team. 
Uh, the only thing that can make sense to me was a C plus in, in the fact that there are two kickers and two defenses on this team. It's a, a wasted space and, and obviously a wasted depth, in my opinion. And some of these other guys, Devontae Parker and the Brandon Cooks of the world, they're up in the air. And Melvin Gordon, up in the air. You know what I mean? So uh, and Danny Amendola, I think that that's another pick you don't need to have. So ultimately, I, I'm going to see a C-plus for Nick Monito in this one. The Orlando Breakers, what do you have for them? Alvin Kamara, obviously a top five running back. You can't go wrong there. Aaron Jones, some people are down on him at 21. I think that's a great pick. I think this is, now mind you, this is a 12 team league, so it's a little bit different than the leagues we've been talking about. So this is a, a, an adjustment, you know, when you're looking at the players and the rosters. Darren Waller in the fourth. Again, that's where he's been drafted. I think that's an overdraft. I've been high on him the past two years, but here we go. You know, everybody's like, oh, you got to get this guy. This is when you're going to be disappointed, unfortunately. There's a lot of big names. They're going to try to get the ball to those big names on that team to prove they're right. And again, watch out for a Brian Edwards on that Vegas team. T.Y. Hilton, he's dinged up a little bit, and he's slow. He's, I don't want to say slowed, but, you know, he doesn't seem to have that quick cut that he used to have, the quick breakaway speed. Might be high to take him at three. He's got Paris Campbell and Michael Pittman that are going to be arguing for some looks as well. And Jonathan Taylor and Marwin Mack and Jack Doyle. So with the new quarterback there in Phillip Rivers, that's a big question mark in my opinion. Coming back with the Bucks QB, I like that. I like Tom Brady. I like Michael Gallup. Carry on uh, Johnson. He may be an early play. He's going to split carries with uh, Adrian Peterson and DeAndre Swift. It's going to take a little time to get him on the field longer than people think. So that's a nice ride it out pick. But at seven, I think that's an overdraft. Marvin Jones, again, I think he's going to have a great year, but I think it's an overdraft at eight. You're probably looking at the 10 to 12, the 13th round for him. Coming back in, Derek Carr and Gasecki and Anthony Miller. These are all question mark players. Taking two kickers and a kicker that early, it's just a personal thing with me. But, you know, the, the success is, a, you know, the, ta- the taste is in the pudding. The thing is what it is. You know, and you can't, you can't draft two kickers in a league like this. You can't draft two team quarterbacks in a league like this. You can't draft two defenses in a team like this. Yeah, I know you'd be better streaming a defense. You'd be better looking for a backup quarterback later on in the year. I think this team has some work to do. I think this team has some promise, though. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of talent on this team. It's just, again, three, four, five wasted picks here, and that could change the whole complexion of this team. I give this team a C plus. Yeah, you know, another team, as we just talked about, uh, that is in a situation where, you know, like Mike and I had spoken about wasted picks, two kickers, two defenses, uh, taking too much of something that you don't need. But, uh, you know, Tom Brady, Alvin Kamara, uh, T.Y. Hilton, Michael Gallup, there's more talent on, and I know that Clyde Edwards Hilaire and Pat Mahomes, that's that's a big reason why that team got a C plus at the TSR Gigaxians more than anything else. But I think this team overall has more talent than just a couple players. So I am going to give them a B minus. I think their upside's a little bit higher than the TSR Gigaxians, but I would go out there and and really say uh, with Jason Lucas's team here to you know to, to get rid of some of the some of those extra you know the extra defense extra kicker and see what else is available and what else is there for you to pick up to make this team that I think is good be potentially great. And so now we have our final trio in the Wake Up Call Fantasy Football Floridian League as Mike and I are giving our, our, uh, our, team, our, our grades for every single fantasy owner in the Wake Up Call Fantasy Football Leagues this year. Every owner gets a grade from the three leagues in Central New York to the Marywood Alumni League to now the Floridian League. Can I go to Disney now is on the clock, Mike. What do you think about this one? Yeah, Saquon Barkley is an excellent pick, of course, in the top top uh, part of the draft. You know, number two pick, you got to take Saquon Barkley or Zeke at that point. I'm looking at Mike Evans. He's dinged up now. They have a lot of targets, but you got Tom Brady throwing the ball. Mike Evans seems to always surprise people. You know, Mike Evans is that guy. He can You can throw up the 50-50 ball in the red zone, and he's going to come down with it. So he's a, definitely a touchdown threat. Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson in the third round, I think, is an excellent get. Todd Gurley's got a lot of upside. He's got a lot of proven people wrong to do. DK Metcalf in the fifth, I think that's a bit high to draft him. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna speak against his talent or his upside though. So that could be a good pick there at five. Looking at uh, Leonard Fournette, a lot of touchdowns are going to happen with Leonard Fournette, and by the end of the year, I don't think he's going to be. 
holding all the carries, but he could be holding all the touchdowns, which is a good thing. He's learned to catch the ball out of the backfield, too, and that's something that Tom Brady did all his career at New England. You're looking at James White-type guys. You're looking at Damian Harris-type guys. Leonard Fournette really opened up his game and really caught the ball in the last year, so that may open up. A lot of people may not be expecting that from Leonard Fournette on this team. Marquise Hollywood-Brown, excellent receiver, can break one at any given point. Phil Lindsay's got Melvin Gordon in his way, but Phil Lindsay, he's faced this before. He's faced this time and time again. He's got challenges getting on the field everywhere he's been, whether it be Colorado, undrafted guy comes out and all of a sudden he's a starting running back of the, uh, of the Broncos. This is a great get. I think this is a, a little bit overdrafted guy on this team again, but still, I'm not going to argue with the talent he has. Hunter Henry, that's an excellent place to take Hunter Henry in the ninth. I think he's going to surprise some people, but again, he's got to He's got to develop that relationship with Tyrod Taylor. That's going to be huge. Sony Michel, he, we could see dividends on Sony Michel real early, but I'm not sure he's going to last. And in New England, you never know. One week, Sony Michel gets 150 yards for touchdowns, and then we don't see him again because some guy that was bagging groceries last week comes and takes his shine. Looking at team quarterback with Cam Newton. From the Patriots, I kind of like that pick. I think he's going to surprise some people. Austin Hooper, that's a great place to take him. Uh, A.J. Dillon, speculative pick. I don't think he's going to take over for Aaron Jones, but you never know. Hunter Renfro, I think it's an excellent pick there at 15. I think you can surprise some people, but watch out for Brian Edwards. Watch out for Henry Ruggs. Watch out for Jalen Richard, Josh Jacobs. They got some weapons there in Vegas, and you know, you know Gruden likes to spread the ball. He's the quarterback whisperer. So I like any of the Las Vegas receivers if they're taking the right part of the draft. Traquan Smith, he's got to step on, up and perform. He had the record-setting catch with Breeze last year, but I think this is the point where Traquan Smith needs to separate himself. He needs to be one of those upper echelon guys. This is a pivotal year for him. I think it's a great place to pick him as a speculative player at this point in the draft at 16. Overall, I think it's a solid team. This team has a way to perform. I think they're going to be able to go far. I'm going to give this team a, an A-. minus. And that is my team because I want to go to Disney and I'm getting impatient. So <laughs> so that's why I changed the name, Can I Go to Disney Now? And it's got Mickey and he's wearing Pluto colors because they didn't have a Pluto one or else I would have chosen Pluto. So I... <laughs> I'm just asking an honest question, uh, you know, Governor Cuomo, can I go to Disney now? So, A minus, I, I appreciate that, my, you know, my goodness. So, there's a chess match with DeSantis and Cuomo right now, and I just want to go to Disney without having to quarantine for 14 days. Buck Hammer's team, Mike, what do you have for this one? Kenyon Drake, I think it's a great pick. I'm not sure that's a great pick at eight, though. I think you could have got him in a second, maybe even the third round. Chris Godwin, though, I like him at 17. I think he has a great pick. Juju Smith-Schuster, is he going to prove that he can be the number one? I'm worried about him against number one corners and against double coverage. Zach Ertz, is he going to be Hurts? Is it Hurts going to be Hurts? Maybe you should go pick up Hurst. This is a situation you're going to have to monitor closely. I think it's a bit high in the fourth round to take Zach Ertz. You know, Cam Akers, again, speculative pick. I think you've got to be patient with that pick, though. It's going to take some time for him to develop, to get on the field. Watch out for Malcolm Brown way early in that situation. Again, these rookies, you got to temper your expectations. These guys didn't have rookie camp. They didn't have regular training camp. They don't have preseason games to do what they need to do to prove themselves. So, And the pass blocking schemes. You know, the NFL is a lot faster, and you got to have the pass blocking. You don't have the pass blocking. You're not on the field. Why? Because that means when you get on the field, they're going to load eight, nine, ten guys in a box because they know you can't pass block it. You're definitely out there to run the ball. I like the Cowboys QB. I like Dak Prescott. I think he's going to go far. Jordan Howard, I don't know why he drafted this cat this high. Seventh round, that's way high for Jordan Howard in a committee situation. I hope he proves me wrong for this owner's sake. Deontay Johnson, nice speculative play with Juju smith to drawing a double coverage in the number one corner. He could surprise some people. Emmanuel Sanders, 158 years old. I think he's going to be able to get it done with Drew Brees, though. He's like the number two. He's got no pressure on him. Michael Thomas is drawing a double coverage in the number one corner. Emmanuel Sanders could go far this year. That's a nice pick there. Duke Johnson, I think that's a reach in the 10th round. Safety went McCall Hardman, but you know you can't underestimate these guys. On any given day, any given Sunday, 
Monday night, these guys could take off on Houston. These guys could take off on Kansas City, so it's not that bad of a play. Naeem Hines is an extreme stretch, in my opinion, at 12 with Jonathan Taylor and Marlon Mack in the way. Jack Doyle's a nice pick there, though. I think if Zach Ertz gets hurt, you have Jack Doyle to lean on. I think that's going to be a good thing. San Fran QB, taking another QB. Again, I'm against that in team quarterback situations, but how can you argue with Jimmy Garoppolo? He's a nice fill-in for you when Dak's on a bye or if Dak gets hurt. Looking at Jamal Williams, I wouldn't have drafted him at all. It's a high speculative pick at 15. I like the kicker you got in gold, and I like the value you got in Beasley at the end of the draft. Overall, his team has some good players. This team has a little bit of work to do. I'm going to give this team a solid A. Uh, Mike giving them an A, and it uh, makes sense, an A for A-Lots, because this is a team, uh, last name uh, Mark a and he wins championships. This team, between him and his son Stefan, they win championships. So, uh, you know, I, I like it, uh, looking at this team. Kenyon Drake has obviously uh, taken over and, and ousted David Johnson out of there, made them feel comfortable in having Kenyon there and David not there anymore. So I like that. I like what Dak, you know, what Dak can do, uh, Cam Akers, Chris Godwin, Juju Smith-Schuster, like Mike said, you know, when we look at the double team, there's something to be said about that. Uh, Zach Ertz, there's some good to be had here. Uh, Deontay Johnson, a nice way to kind of balance himself out. If there's an issue with Juju or if Juju struggles to get open or get some points, nice one-two punch there, but I would put that in the flex where he has it right now because there's other guys you want to start. Emmanuel Sanders, very talented guy who's now on a team with a very ta- talented quarterback. Uh, he knew what he was doing. He was in Denver, found a lot of success, and then he made his way to New Orleans with Drew Brees. So uh, smart on this. I'm a Cole Hardman. Good to get him late in the game. Uh, Naheem Hines is a kind of a jack-of-all-trades in the backfield for Indianapolis. I covered him when he was at NC State. I think there's a lot of good to be had by that, but he's one of those guys that you kind of scour the waiver wire for or free agency for. Not someone you necessarily are going to play a lot, but he could have some positive upside. And then, uh, you know, the uh, Cole Beasley pick, something could come from that. Jamal Williams, uh, nothing really coming from that pick. And not a big fan of the Duke Johnson Jr. pick. So, uh, overall, for me, I'm going to have to give uh, Buck Hammers, uh, I'm going to give them a B plus. But I think that there is, uh, I mean, this is Mark Mark Vies for championship. So, I believe he can get there, but I'm going to give him a B plus for now. And the final team of all of our fantasy owners and of the Florida League, Mike, is Team Elite. What do you have for this? Yeah, I like Dalvin Cook. I like him because he's going to have a career year because he's in a contract year, but he's injury prone. So I don't know about taking him at five. You might have gotten him in the second round. But you did come back and get Tyreek Hill, who's arguably a guy that's going to get 100 yards and a touchdown every week for you. I like Chris Carson a lot. I like the A.J. Brown pick. I think it's a little bit high for A.J. Brown. But you figure I was taking at 44. It's not that much higher than he needs to be taken. Jonathan Taylor's a speculative pick. They're saying he's going to take over for Marwin Mack. Cool your jets on that. Don't expect too much. But this is a guy when he catches, when he gets the ball, he can catch the ball. He can run the ball between the tackles. This guy's a supreme talent, so it's not necessarily a bad pick there. Stefan Diggs, he's going to surprise some people, but he's taken over as the true number one. No feeling on the other side there to kind of break it up. And one's number one one game, one's number one the other. I know he's got John Brown over there. I know he's got Cole Beasley in the slot. You know, he, he could prove people wrong, he's, but there's some questions with him and the relationship he's trying to build with Josh Allen. How can you build a relationship without preseason, without a full camp? It's hard to do. It's timing, so it's going to be slow. You're going to have to be patient. Gronk is going to be up and down. He's going to have games where he kills it and has 150 yards and three touchdowns. Then the next week he's going to have... Six targets, four catches, and 40 yards. So be prepared for the roller coaster ride. I see you back that up with Eric Ebron in case that happens. Looking at the quarterback situation, getting a Saints quarterback in the eighth round, Drew Brees, that's a pretty good pick there. Darrell Henderson, I have some questions about. Justin Jefferson, rookie, he's going to have an opportunity to, to shine because he's going to be the number two. Yeah, Adam, Adam Thielen on the other side, so there's no pressure on him. And I think he's going to outperform most other number two corners. And Brashard Perryman, I like the guy. I like the spot he's in. He's had a bad luck career with injuries. It's just I don't know that he's the number one receiver 
in New York. I, I don't know if I can play that guy. Darrell Williams, he could surprise people. And if something happens, I may like a Darwin Thompson. We didn't really see Darwin Thompson, but Darrell Williams got some opportunities last night. So that's a good pick there in the 12th round. Uh, we talked about Eric Ebron. I like the Patriots D. It's just I don't like taking a D that high. Scotty Miller's going to surprise some people when the quarterback in Tom Brady Hall of Famer with all the championships has a nickname for you, takes you under his wing and calls you Scooter. I think he's missing that Julian Edelman type guy, and I think that's what Scotty Miller is going to develop into out of the slot. I like that pick a lot. The Colts quarterback coming back to back up your quarterback situation with Breeze is not a bad play. It's just, again, a team quarterback leads. I'm not a fan of taking more than one because there's probably somebody on the waiver wire should your guy fall apart because you get the backup quarterback automatically. I think this is a good drafted team. I think this team could do well. One or two changes need to be made here. I'm going to give this team a B plus. Yeah, I think uh, Team Elite, uh, Stefan Alot's team, another, like I said, the Alot family uh, winning championships in this. I think the top half of this is, is really good. I think uh, Drew Brees, Dalvin Cook, healthy. Uh, Chris Carson, Tyreek Hill, A.J. Brown, uh, Rob Gronkowski. I like all that. Stephon Diggs, Jonathan Taylor. I'm a fan of everything going on there. The bench is a concern to me, so ultimately I'm going to give it a B-plus with Mike as well, but I think it has an outside shot at an A-. minus. So those are our picks. Mike will join me to make our picks on the league itself and uh, you know, and what we think is going to be as far as playoff-wise. We're going to do that in a separate video. Now that I am hosting the Dancatora Telethon, and I've been on the air from 9 a.m., right around 9 a.m. this morning to past 1 p.m. today, this has been a four-hour show in a two-hour time slot. And so shout-out to all the companies that work with us. you got a lot of extra time. Shout-out to everybody on here. And uh, the, the telethon of Wake Up Call continues, but on video. So, Mike, I will bid you adieu and thank you on this video as we'll get set for something else. Check us out on YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. And, of course, uh, every Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time with the Fantasy Football Power Hour, probably presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub on 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York, on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. And on Facebook.com backslash live now dt in the meantime mike i will talk with you very very soon but thank you for joining this amazingly effective telethon that we have had this morning i appreciate it so very much yeah it was fun it was a lot of fun seeing the draft minds of different people so i i like that a lot i like that we had the opportunity to have this exchange please if i gave you a grade that you didn't like please don't hold that against me you know what you need to do is send me an email and i'm going to help you get a c up to an a or a b up to an a plus you know, I, and I'm not saying I'm the magic man, but I, I you know, I, I, I might be able to help or might be able to lend a hand. I'm not afraid to do that. Reach out to me. Go to the site, Hall of Fame Fantasy Football. You can always reach out to me on the Winning Fantasy Football group on Facebook as well. That yeah, coming from Mike Sofka and a Winning Fantasy Football on Facebook. Make sure you join us there. Mike, as always, thank you so much. All right, Dan. Talk to you next time. All right, take care. That coming from Mike Sofka once again here on Wake Up Call. With Dan Tortora, I want to thank all of our proud partners here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. A big special thanks today in a four-hour broadcast. Four hours, folks. For a double what we promised you. Central and Upstate New York partners, Cafe Kubal, Carvel DeWitt, Wildcat Sports Pub, Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. Go to maandpazpopcorn.com and type in the promo code DT20 and you will get my exclusive 20% off offer just for you. DT20 on maandpazpopcorn.com. Chick-fil-A, Cicero, Avicoli's, Honda City of Liverpool, Borio's Restaurant, the Millhouse Market, K9 Camp Dog Daycare, Trapper's Pizza Pub, K9 Campground Dog Boarding, and our beverages of choice right over my shoulder. Coca-Cola as well as Body Armor. Thank you to the Carvel DeWitt for the annoying moment of the week. Chick-fil-A Cicero for lead, learn, evolve, ad lib, and deliver. Focusing today on freeing your mind and overcoming those negative thoughts and negative uh, not, and not holding on to negativity in general anymore. Big shout out to Juanita Ward, my co-host for that, of Syracuse WNBA and Overseas Basketball History, as well as a current assistant coach for Division One Women's Basketball at Jackson State. The top dog of the week here from K9 Camp Dog Daycare and K9 Campground Dog Boarding that proudly went to everybody trying to make our high school sports happen, everybody working on high school football, everybody working to get these schools 
back in session in general. And a big shout out and much love and appreciation and support to everybody out there that is chasing their dreams and doing everything they can to improve their lives at a very trying time uh, to become better than we were going into it. So a big shout out to all of you and to Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com, as well as the winning fantasy football group that we have on Facebook that you can join for free by searching it in Facebook's search bar. And uh, to the Wildcat Sports Pub for some extra information here, giving you draft grades on everybody, every single team, every single owner. A big shout out to all of our owners inside of this wake up call fantasy football uh, league challenge of the three leagues that we have here in central and upstate New York, as well as the leagues that we have in the league that we have in Florida and the new Marywood University Alumni League. I want to give a shout out to all of the owners once again. A big shout out to Johnny Roberts, Aaron Roberts, Becky Al- Becky uh, Styles, Oliver, John Tui, Matt Essef, Eric Kolhep, uh, Jared Horton, and I also want to give uh, a shout out to Mark Alot, Stephen Alot, uh, of course Mike Sofka, uh, Lisa Hughes, Eric Cooper, a, a Joe Lando the Third, Brennan Cooper, Rick Etienne, uh, Trey Sofka, Nicholas Monito, Jason Lucas. And the list goes on and on here. Phil Carpenter, as well as um, as Justin Lasher, Nate Tamalade, Nicholas Colon, Zach Warner, Rudy Fernandez, Evan Rosenthal. I want to give you all uh, a big old thank you. And I want to make sure that uh, I also say thank you to Mark West, Danny Tome, Greg Eckert, Paul Darby, Myron Kittle, Julian Wiggum, James Lynch, and last but not least in our Marywood alumni League. I want to give a special thanks to John Ball II, as well as Brendan Murphy, Joe Forgio, and Rosh Turetsky, Brandon Smith, Matt, and Matt Essef once again, who joined us in this one, and Lawrence Tompkins. Have a great day. <laughs> we have had one heck of a show here today, over four hours broadcasting. We went from we went from the morning commute and the morning cup of joe from Cafe Kubal to your lunch break to now you're back to work. That is Wake Up Call. Under promise, over deliver. We love you. We appreciate you. We hope you have a great day. Find us on Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT, Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT, and as always, wakeupcalldt.com. God bless. No stress. Do your best. And make sure you go to wakeupcalldt.com today and tomorrow for uh, Syracuse and North Carolina information and the video uh, Mike and I are going to do where you'll be able to see our faces and we'll be giving our thoughts on our reality predictions for the NFL. You've heard our fantasy thoughts. We'll be telling you who we think is going to make the playoffs and who we think is going to get through those playoffs in just a little bit here where sports meets life. Thank you so much. God bless to you. Please be good to yourself and good to other people. And count your blessings and appreciate your blessings. Focus on the positive and be the positive. I'll talk to you soon. Sending my love to you.